Hey, YouTube, if you got this part of the video, you've got the live unedited edition of Home Gadget Geeks, Thursday night, 8 p.m. in the Central Time Zone, July 6, 2017. If you're listening to this any other time than that, it just it's okay. You have um, you have caught the uh, the recorded version of this, and uh, we we normally do this live Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Central, out at theaverageguy.tv slash live. And uh, we're going to get started here in a few minutes, so hang tight. Uh, Brian already gives me a sound check and says we sound good, so thank you. Yeah, you do. You sound uh, excellent. Brian, we'll uh, get you off of there. Okay, I think that's working fine. <clears throat> and uh, we got an hour and some change full of stuff tonight, so hang tight with us. I got the Surface RT running <laughs> running uh, the, the graphics for the for home gadget case is Cyber Frontiers is up right now, but so my daughter gave this is you know the old RTs that we got for right yeah, yeah. remember those days 126 bucks yeah. or whatever they were yeah and I can't believe we even paid for those things they were so awful but uh so she used it for I don't know a good two years maybe two wow. two and a half and back in oh I'm gonna say the winter she said Dad I it just it's the battery's not working anymore and I just you know. It's just I bought her a new keyboard because the keyboard that comes with it was terrible and some of those other things. So she's been using my Surface Pro 3, and she gets a new laptop when she starts college. So I got it from her. She's like, oh, by the way, it doesn't hold the charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, I'm having – I have a 3.2, and it, it's, it's shot. I mean, yeah. it's just shot. So I Googled. I was like, well, I wonder if I could just replace the battery. And there, the, the commentary on it was like, this device could not be any harder because it's all glue. Like, you know, oh, so yeah. you got to heat it up and pry and heat it up and pry and heat it up. Wait, are you talking about a Mac or an, an Apple product <laughs> or a <laughs> Windows product? It sounds oddly similar to my old iMac. Well, Sanofsky had huge Mac envy. Like, you know, he wanted, in those days, they were trying to catch Apple. Right. And, right. Uh, and so they, yeah, that's kind of the design was, I think, taken after an Apple iPad or whatever. They're impossible to get into. So I was like, well, do I replace the, um, do I replace it or do I just leave it? So it's going to sit right there. Just, it, it still works plugged in. I just can't, you just can't unplug it. Yeah. I, I have my yeah. Surface Pro 3 in a dock all the time connected to a, another monitor. So, but, you know, when I take it on the road, it's like, oh God, it's just. It's horrible. It's really horrible. Aaron uh, Lawrence is joining us. Aaron, thanks for coming out. Good. If we get Emily, we'll have we'll double our lady population tonight. Yay! That's awesome. We're getting there. Yay. Just, uh, just would be nice to get a few more and and be a little more gender diverse. That would be nice. And then my my band, which is sitting right there, it broke the band broke which was the problem with the first uh, one i got a free second one right so uh, then it broke again and now it's not holding a charge really well and so it's like well, okay maybe my days with the band are done and it's time to move on to, yeah. to i was launch. yeah i was i was somewhat surprised that they kind of abandoned it so quickly you know they they had put so much effort into it and you know no, marketing and, it's I completely know, different I yeah i completely you know, yeah See when I was, uh, I'm still a uh, full force on the Apple watch even yeah. more so now than I was when it came out. I mean, the fact that this thing has stayed current, they haven't left the gen ones out in the dust. They're getting all the updates. Um, it's more waterproof than they claim. The first one is I've reached into a lake forgetting. I have it on to grab a, actually a Frisbee disc <laughs> and pulled it out. No problem. Uh, so I think you say you're pulling out a bass. We thought maybe pulling out a bass. Oh, no. We were playing. <laughs> that would be a lot better. No, we were playing frisbee golf, and I'm not the best at it, so my disc was in the pond. And, yeah. oh, that's funny. Aaron said if we get too many gals out here, it's not going to be the average guy network. I never even Ooh. I never even thought that was possible <laughs> to have more ladies than guys, and uh, uh. so we called it the average guy. I get corrected on that all the time because I call every everybody a guy. But that's in you know in some regions that's not necessarily true. So, <sighs> oh well, Aaron, thank you for pointing that out. I'm not to change all my branding. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yikes. Oh well. All right, we are just after eight. Let's uh, 
Let me get this. Oh, I guess I did. Oh, the average geek network. There you go. Oh, oh hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Let's Let's see, see if, it that's, if that's the average geek. We'll buy it before the show is over. That would fit the uh, you know the whole geek motif. Dave and I were going to do all geek stuff. We had right. the network. That's why I changed the show to Home mm -hmm. Gadget Geeks, and then he never did. <laughs> so no, uh, it's not not available. The, the average geek is uh, make an offer, which is no, uh, never good. I can get the average geek dot design. I can get the average geek dot me, but not TV. That's cheap, actually. It's seven bucks. The average it, geek dot TV is taken. That's weird. The average geek dot co. Uh, yeah, I design me and co. I'd take me. The average geek dot network because I think dot network is one. Mm. Those always get confusing though. That's the hard part, right? People yeah. So you have expert guru mom, <laughs> mo, whatever that is, Desi, Democrat, Republican, soy, space. The average guy dot space. Uh, attorney, CEO, consulting, dentist, engineer, engineering, lawyer, and pro. How long until people start getting used to that? To putting in something instead of com or org or I don't edu that, or I don't, know if, I don't know if anybody really types it in but the first time. And then if That's they true. get it wrong, it just takes them to Google. And then once it's in cash. That's yep. a good point. Yeah. The the average geek, there's a lot of, you know, you can get cloud, click, tech, IO, blog, computer domains, online, download, email, host, link, a Mobi network. What about like uh, using AV? Is network what about, yeah. What about AVG? Like just the AVG geek something. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sure there's some of those. AVG.network. Yeah. yeah, I, that, like that, yeah. Well, even for 20 bucks, the average geek dot network would not be up because i would be replacing yeah. the average guy dot tv right? right that's what i'd be replacing and then you just forward that and then i'd spend four more years getting people to go the, like, the <laughs> av average what what network what <laughs> geek average computers what what i don't you know it's it, it took me this long to get people to recognize the average guy dot tv i think finally everybody is there right and uh, so yeah, I guess that's true. You already have a, a, a different than dot com, and I've never noticed anything different. So that answered my own question right there. Just says guy, you know. Sorry, Aaron and Emily. Emily's out there. Hey, we we have doubled our female population. Just excellent. Like doubled. Nice job, ladies. Represent well in the chat room tonight. Okay, let me get the notes. I'm a little behind here. Let's see. Home Gadget Geeks intro. Let's get that up. I was goofing around. Brian joined early, and so I was goofing around with him. Delight. Uh, Brian, did you have a good fourth? Yeah, it was great. Spent some time with some uh, friends who have a really nice backyard with a pool. The pool they actually converted nice. from chlorine to salt water pool this summer, so that was kind of oh, fun. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Those are, uh, those are nice. I experienced my yeah. first one in San Diego, and I loved that. Yeah, it was nice. Ryan says the average geek dot T is available, but Emily says, meh, everyone's a guy. So I, we're, I think we're okay. We'll just, okay. we'll keep it the average guy dot TV. And, <laughs> and uh, it was a fun, uh, fun exercise to go down. We, uh, we went, I, we didn't do anything. We barbecued, we barbecued That's on good. Tuesday, did some burgers and dogs. And, uh, and then uh, family came over. We were drinking wine by three, which was awesome. I was, Taking a nap at five. <laughs> <laughs> Did you cook the food before that? Oh, yes. Yeah, the food was first. Thank goodness. You got to get the order right. Get the barbecue yeah. done first, yep. then start okay. drinking the wine. So, Mike, would you would you do for the fourth? We uh, we had a party on Saturday. Actually, had people over then, and then um, Fourth of July, we went and hung out at some friends' house. We did. They have a kids parade in our neighborhood through the park, so all the kids yeah. get on their bikes and nice. decorate them. So we walked Emmett through that. Took PD down there. Had a good time. It was very, very chill. But you know, the hard part about living in the neighborhood 
and this is funny. This is the first time I realized that my wife, this is her first year ever living in a neighborhood for 4th of July. She's always lived either at the farm or an apartment complex. So she didn't realize that fireworks is like a loud event that lasts for like about five days. And, and PD didn't like that either. PD was just hiding uh. under the bed for about a whole week. Um, but it was a lot of fun to see, to have a place that everyone's around and everyone's outside all week. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, my my twenty eight year old Phil, my oldest, has turned into a get off my lawn old man, and he was like, <laughs> "I understand, I I can't sleep. They, they're shooting fireworks off all night," and I'm like, "Dude, you, when did you when did you turn ninety? <laughs> right?" <laughs> and so it, but we here in Nebraska, in? here in Nebraska, it's five days, literally five days of fireworks: Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. Boom! Wow! Wow! We're in. Okay, here we go. Let me, uh, guys, uh, in the chat room, uh, Emily, Peter, Brian, Ken, Aaron, welcome. A few more will join us as we go. Appreciate you guys hanging tight with us. Here we go. This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 317, recorded on July 6th, 2017. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios here in a uh, pretty hot, although tomorrow, Mike, I think a little reprieve from the hot weather, but man, a hot Bellevue, Nebraska. Mike's up in Omaha. I'm ready for fall. I'll ready. Yeah. I, Mike, it's, it's I, I am too. I, I am definitely ready for fall. These temperatures are fun for a while. I used to love them when I lived in an apartment and had a pool uh, right there I could go to, but without the pool, it's a little bit hot. Yeah. How yeah. hot has it been? Oh, uh, 90s, been? middle, lower, middle to upper 90s. Really high humidity. And yeah. it's just, mm -hmm. you know, anyway. So yeah. we post a show with world class show notes, of course, each week out at theaverageguy.tv. Don't forget, you can join us on our new mobile app if you new. It's like two years old. <laughs> Get out there on the mobile app, homegadgetgeeks.com. We were talking in a pre show about maybe getting a new brand for the average guy. We have two ladies out there tonight in the chat room, which is a record, <laughs> a world record. We normally have one. And of course, Aaron and Emily, Aaron, Aaron Lawrence, who's been joining us uh, for the last couple months here. And Emily are out there. Uh, but, of course, if you want to get access to that mobile app, homegadgetgeeks.com is the way to do it. Big buttons, just download it, get it on your phone. Easiest way to get it done and easiest way to listen live, by the way, if you're on the road. Just a, a simple way to do it. Don't forget we're going commercial-free on both YouTube and on Spreaker now. So if we're just doing that, if you want to support the show, we can always use your support, and it's always helpful. Patreon or Amazon. And Amazon, Mike Weaker bought a – can I tell – Can I, I know it was you because you posted it on Facebook. That, can oh. I tell – can I tell him the big purchase that you? Sure. I don't know if it was me or not, was it? Well, didn't you get a new bed? Oh, yeah. We did get a new bed. Did that go through to you? It did, yeah. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. We got a, um, we got a Tuft and Needle, um, one of those memory foam mattresses. We had a Casper before in the apartment, and this, it was time to go up from a twin. Uh, Hannah and I have been, or no, a full, right? Full. Yeah, full. Right? Four, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hannah and I have been having it's a sleep in a full. Funny. So we went to a king uh, on Tuft and Needle. Ooh. Pretty affordable uh, for a, for a brand new mattress, and like I said, I loved I love those boxed up mattresses. Arrive at your door, slide them through any doorway, and it's just so it's so satisfying. You like pop it open, you cut the plastic, and you just go. Un yeah, it's 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 amazing. So love it. I'm, I'm glad that went through. I was wondering if it did or not. It did. That's a nice little. I'm not gonna lie. That was that's the biggest uh, item I've ever seen come across Ooh. Amazon. Yeah, it was like 950 bucks or something. But yeah, nine, nine. I think you got it for nine. That's like a seventy dollar commission, which is no. There we go. That cr that's pretty crazy. So if you're you're buying on Amazon, head over to theaverageguy.tv, click the link like Mike did. And uh, purchase a bed, apparently. Yeah. Uh, what are your tough to needle through Amazon? That's the, that's the way to do it. Apparently, that's the way to get in. All right. You've already heard him. He's jumped in a couple of times. Brian Freelander is back. Dr. Brian Freelander is back. Brian, How you doing, Jim? great to have Likewise. you on. Thanks for coming. Yeah. That's good. Good to that's see great. you. That's good, great. Good to have you. Have you ever thought about, Brian, have you ever thought about buying a bed online? No, I haven't. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I buy everything else, so why not? You and know? It, but it's kind of nice because they have. So the way they do it is all of those boxed up mattresses that arrive at your door. The way they do it is, you know, you have your thirty, ninety, whatever day warranty it is. If right. you don't like it, and if you don't like it, they will actually come and grab it from you. Well, not them. They will hire someone to come get it from you, and they actually give it to a local. Um, uh, like homeless either. shelter. Yep. Yeah. Wow. So, so some place gets a nice mattress. So it's like, you know, it's kind of no harm, no foul. Either you love it and you keep it 
or you get your money back and you know that um, someone gets a bed now. Kind of nice. That's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. We talked about that when Aaron was on. We talked a little bit about um, so you've been sleeping on it a couple nights, Mike. What do you think? What's the what's the what do you think so far? <laughs> First of all, the size because uh, the reason we ended up getting it because Hannah was kind of back and forth. Okay, do we really need a king size bed? Do we not? Well, Emmett is just getting bigger and bigger, and in the mornings, what happens is at five when he wakes up, she'll go get him give him his bottle, bring him back to bed, put him in bed with me when she goes off to work. And then for the next 30 minutes, he just kind of lays in bed with me and plays around. Well, that little morning time is just, it's just too cramped. It was way too cramped in a full. So uh, the bigger size, first of all, is amazing. I feel like I can spread Eagle and so can she. And it's just like, we don't even touch. Like, I, th I think we have different like weather in both sides of our bed. It's fantastic. <laughs> I asked her if great. it was any warmer or colder on her side. Um, but as far as those foam mattresses go, super comfortable. Uh, took takes a little bit to get used to, I think, but we're used to it because we had a Casper from a while back. If I had to compare the two, I initially liked the Casper just a little bit better. Um, I feel like it was a tad bit firmer on the top. Um, same support once you get down past that first layer, but it had a little bit more support, which I like. Hannah likes the softness of this one a little bit better. Um, but for the price and for brand new and shipped straight to your door and all those reasons, uh, I really like it. I love the new bed. I put the link to it in the, and I'll put it in the show notes, but we'll also put it in the chat room. So if you're out there live and you want to get, uh, you want to take a peek at it, uh, tuft and needle king size yep. looks good. Like I said, 900, which is not all not that bad. bad I mean, right? when you think about like those mattresses, so I, we went and actually got the box brain from Nebraska Furniture Mart, or if anyone's from Nebraska, uh, Mrs. B's, which is pretty much like their clearance center of Nebraska Furniture Mart. So we went and got them there. And what they do at Nebraska Furniture Mart is they take all of their beds. If they got delivered and returned like within, and they never opened for some reason, they were bad. They sent them over to Mrs. B's. So I went and laid on a quilt $3,000 mattress. And I was like, Hey, I'm actually pretty happy with my $900 purchase. Would I notice a difference? Maybe. Um, maybe a little bit, but not, not enough, at least on the initial lay test, which is terrible. You can't do that in the store, right? You need to sleep on it and wake up and see if your back's killing you the next morning. That's how you need to do a true test of the mattress. Yeah. But you've been sleeping on it. Good so but far. I've been sleeping on it. It's been great. Okay. No, yeah. well, there you go. It's, uh, uh, I, you know, I'd, I'd be skeptical on Amazon. Well, what I'm not skeptical about, Brian, let's not bury the lead. The reason we really brought you on is to talk about the echo show Boom. is, is what we brought you on for. Those were out late last week. If you follow Dave McCabe, he's already created a video. So you want to take a peek at that out there, kind of first review. He tears it out of the box. But we didn't want to go too early, uh, Brian, because we were afraid maybe it wouldn't come in time. And yes. I didn't really want you talking about it with like a day. You know, it was like right, hey, sure. this thing for a while. We, we kind of know it's a lot like the the tall cylinder device, which name I which will go uh, anonymous at this point. Uh, right. Talk a little. Talk a little bit about why did you pick this up, and then what were you hoping for with it, and how's it working so far? Well, you know me; I always like to be on the bleeding edge. Of course, when new gadget comes out, I got to be the first one to have it. Um, I've been I've been using the you know the Amazon you know Echoes probably for about two and a half years now, and the idea of having a screen was really interesting, um, you know, to me um, in, in terms of just getting some of that visual feedback that. Um, you know, I thought I would really, uh, you know, enjoy. Um, and so I've been, you know, I've been using it pretty much the way I've used um, my, my Echo Dot that I had in the, uh, in the kitchen. So I replaced the Dot with the show. And, you know, I, it definitely, you know, it, it I think it sounds really good. Um, maybe a tad better than the Echo. I mean, in terms of it's got two speakers. Um, I mean, it, it seems... Two on the bottoms, to, right? It's a screen on yeah, the top yeah. and then you know, speakers kinda, on the bottom. Yeah, so better than the Echo, not just the dot, right? What's that? You think it, it sounds the, better than the, the full echo. echo? It's pretty... I would say it's pretty close, yeah. Okay. I think it... I mean, it sounds really clear and crisp. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, had some negative things to say about the design. I think it looks... You know, it's it's very functional. It looks... It, we got We got the... The version I got is the in black. It comes in black and white. I got the black one. It sits next to, on my counter or next to the um, the toaster, and I think it looks it looks fine. I mean, it you know, and it 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 works well. Um, and you know, having the visuals nice. You ask you know, you ask about the weather, and you get you know the you know the icons for the weather for the for the day, and then it shows you the week. So it's kind of nice. Gives you a little something to hold on to. Um, 
and you know you find some new things it can do like you could say you know uh, you know madame a you know take a picture because it has now a front has a camera in the front so it will take a picture um, it will also do right now it also uploads the pictures to uh, Amazon Prime photos and so it will you know do a uh, you know sort of a collage and a slideshow so it's it's got some interesting features that I'm still learning about but you know most of all it, it still operates pretty much you know the way you know the the echoes and the dots have you know worked in the past I have it um, I mean the I, I think what Amazon does which is really um, pretty incredible I mean the out of box experience is you know just you know just incredible I mean um, it, not only that even before that uh, it got delivered on uh, June 28th um, to my doorstep so I got a text from UPS that it was delivered I pick it I pick it up bring it in the house 30 seconds after that I get an email from Amazon saying here's some tips and tricks on how to use your Alexa show you know and um, and then of course it's automatically reg registered to me I plug it in it did take about um, it recognized, you know, who I was. I put on the Wi-Fi, and then it went out. And it took about ten minutes to do um, over-the-air updates. Um, that took a little bit of time. It downloaded some updates, and then it restarted a couple of times. But I made it work flawlessly, you know, out of the box. So the out of the box experience was really very positive. And then it connected to all my smart devices. Uh, I have some switches and light bulbs um, that you know I have connected, and it worked well. Um, so it's you know it's 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 work really it's work really fine I have no I have no complaints. Yeah, because it has a screen. There's now some right. video capabilities, and I'm noticing yes. in the on the side it says Alexa. Shoot, sorry. Oop. Let me wait a Oops. second. So <laughs> everybody's Alexa doesn't golf, but it says uh, play my video flash briefing. So I would normally just say flash briefing, and it it goes mm -hmm. into the audio one. I'm assuming now there's some specially enabled video content as well that's coming on these. Um, have you, well, have you, can you messed do, with it much? Yeah, you can you can play you know anything that um, you know Amazon Prime Video and YouTube videos right now. So those are the two that are supported. And what's nice too is I mean if you if you you know because it is a seven inch touch screen. I mean if you want you know and you're near it, you can you know when when you let's say you said. Um, you know, play um, you know, I don't know, play movies from X, Y, and Z, and the movies are on the screen. You then can use your voice to say choose movie two or choose movie three. So you can use your voice to actually select the video that you want to play, or you can use your finger and touch the one you want to play right now. Um, I haven't tried it, but um, some people are excited with the prospect of you know recipes. Um, on the screen in terms of the videos and the preparation and everything like that it seems to be everyone that you know some people I've heard that have gotten it have put it in the kitchen you know so I think it's going to be you know I think it's a kind of a neat device um, you know for the for the kitchen and uh, for some of the other video conferencing uh, capabilities um, which are built in as well so if you asked it to play home gadget geeks uh, on YouTube mm -hmm. would it Pull right. up the YouTube app, try to find Home Gadget Geeks, and then I assume whatever it would play. Yeah, so it puts up. up first. Yeah, it puts up thumbnails, and then it puts numbers next to underneath each thumbnail of the video, and then you could say play, you know, video two, and it would then go out. So you can use. I mean, if you you know, like say you were at the sink and you turned around and you saw the thumbnails, you could use your voice to select it as well, oh, which is nice. Um, so again, it supports YouTube and you know watching you know Prime video. You know, Prime, Prime video. Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't think a movie that would necessarily be a movie watching device, right? Right, right. Yeah, but you can see definitely you know you know you want to you know you want to watch a quick YouTube video, three four minutes, five minutes, or something like that. And a lot of times, there's some of the videos I watch, you know, with, whether it be a new show or something like that, it could be you know a ten minute maybe. Maybe a ten minute video. It's, it would be nice, you know, while you while you're having breakfast or something like that, you know. Tony in the chat room says, "So kids can see the lyrics to songs, uh, yes, and, and they didn't realize there was questionable <laughs> lyrics because right now you're seeing like you can't really understand the lyrics in music anymore, but uh, right. now it'll start displaying those lyrics, and you can go, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> now some of the I found some of the songs the lyrics pop up, and for others they don't. So you just get the thumbnail of the." The jack, you know, the music jacket. So it's not consistent. I don't know, you know, why some have it and some don't. I don't know if it's like, you know, some sort of IP thing or whether it's not in a database. But um, some some songs yeah. you do, you can't you do have the lyrics and 
some you don't. There are also, I haven't played around, but there are parental restrictions. So you can set restrictions on some of the videos and some of the content that can be accessed. So if you have younger, younger, younger kids in the house, you can play around with some of the permissions. Have you used uh, Spotify on it yet, or are you a Spotify user? I don't. Um, I actually bought the um, you know Amazon Prime Music. They have like uh, it was like three ninety nine a month, and so I've been right. I've been using that. Um, but you can hook it up to Spotify and Pandora. You, you, I think you just cho- go in and you you basically you know choose your preference. Right, because it works with the um, Amazon Echo, and, and we use it. My one wonder on the uh on yours would be so we have an ipad that sits right next to our echo and it's in our kitchen mm-hmm. and we actually use spotify spotify connects to all the different you know echoes or whatever they right. are in the house also google chromecast audios which we have mm-hmm. out on our porch so we leave our ipad out and let our guests during parties select the music so they say okay here play this and it sends it to the chromecast audio out on our porch and plays out there so i was wondering i guess with the capability to see and now have a screen can it cast out that audio to different devices on the network or is it limited to only playing on the Echo? It'd be, it'd be nice to have an all-in-one and not have the need for an iPad and kind of the speaker right there. Somehow I'm going to say no only because, okay. you know, yeah, I, I haven't, yeah, um, I haven't, I haven't seen that. I understand what you want to do, but I somehow I'm not sure that it, it's it probably wouldn't. Just, I wouldn't see probably, them wanting allowing no, exactly their, their ecosystem. Exa- right? Exactly, you yeah. want them to stay yeah. in their ecosystem and especially kind of bring you towards Prime Music. Right. Even if they did have the ability to cast out, I'm guessing it would only be on Prime Music, not on any right. other third party. I mean, you. I mean, you could. You. I mean, you could always use it to connect as a Bluetooth speaker. But right. You know, that, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and that's what we do when we're in the kitchen too. And right. I'm waiting for Spotify to have the ability to send out to. Um, like two outputs, right? right. I want to send it out to my patio and this echo that's right here, so it plays right. all in one. Pretty much making Sonos without Sonos. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I suspect you're going to see that. You know, I know. I think I would probably hope that. So. I'm, I'm sure that's what Apple. You know, the Apple, it, the, the uh, new Bluetooth. I, the new, yeah, the, what they yep. call it, iHome. Is it iHome? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. No, I. Is that what it is? Is it iHome? iHub. Um, iHub. Uh-oh. But uh, Uyghur's yeah. forgetting his apple. I know I'm forgetting Nomen my apple stuff. Oh no! <laughs> I went down. I went down a road, and all of a sudden, I lost all my stuff. But uh, but the new Bluetooth standard actually supports sending your audio. Right. So for the new phones right. to support it, you can split it out and send your audio to two different Bluetooth speakers, which right. is nice. Right. So I want that same sort of functionality just via the network, not via Bluetooth. Got it. Absolutely. Brian, 230 bucks for these things. If you buy two, yes. you can get them in the 170 range, which is the, yep. you know, the can, uh, the, the price for the can at this point. Is that uh, at 230? Obviously you bought one. You don't, yes, you don't I see do. a problem with uh, 230 for the device worth it. Do you think for, for what you've gotten I so far, would you, would you plunk it down again to get a second one? I don't think so. I, th- I mean, I, I, I think, you know, over the next couple of months, we'll probably see some, new applications and i think you know as they expand there might be you know in you know in, increased functionality and uh maybe more you know, i might see more value i don't think i'd plunk down and you know to buy another, another one right now i mean i think as you know you get more you know uh you know i mean cameras and home security stuff built in i think it adds a nice you know a nice you know it, you know, it's nice functionality because you could say, you know, uh, A, show me what's happening in the backyard, you know, and it will just, you know, turn on the, you, you'll get the feed from your camera outside or whatever you may be. Uh, it does have an interesting feature called drop-in, which is, um, qu- I think, quite interesting. And I, I could certainly see the application where maybe you had elderly parents or, you know, um, with their, of course, with their permission. And so like from my, actually from my, I can do it from my phone. I can, you know, even when I'm away, I can drop in and see what's happening, you know, through my bay window into my backyard. And so it puts like a, like a, almost like a filter and it it gives the person in the room a a couple of seconds to like probably determine if they want to actually activate it. But I have it set to automatically turn on. So this kind of film goes away and I can actually see what's happening in my backyard through the bay window, uh, you know, in my kitchen. So it's kind of an interesting, interesting feature. And again, it, it can be turned on or off. And, you know, so, I mean, I know some people are concerned about, 
how you know invasive uh, it is but you know like anything else you can turn it on and off but it, it is a nice feature if you're you know have to you know looking out for you know either you know you know kids uh, or you know elderly parents I mean it could be a really nice feature well drop in works on the echoes right and so I've I've got that echo yep. he down here I we always see my daughter when dinner's ready you know I'm down here working and dinner's ready my wife sends my daughter oh, yeah. down to get me and she'll pop mm-hmm. around the corner dad dinner's ready you know and I'll go up well now with drop in she can go to the can and yep. say you know hey drop in on Jim's echo and 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 it'll it'll open up makes it like an intercom and she can just yep. say hey dinner's ready most cases i don't always i don't it's connected to the board here mm-hmm. and i don't always have the speakers turned on so i won't always hear it right. now on the echo that works as an intercom on the mm-hmm. show it really works as a spy device you know like you were <laughs> yes. saying yep. you know, yeah it's a, it's a little more interesting where did you move brian where did you move your other echo to then so now you got the show you put it in place of an echo did you move the echo somewhere else um, I have too many, Jim. <laughs> so I, I put it into a little bit of retirement. It was a, it was a first first generation. So I have a second generation dot in my uh, in my like sort of home office, and then we have an echo up in the bedroom, um, which we use a lot for music. Um, and then um, I also have the um, the uh, the portable echo that I take on the road with me when I'm doing uh, presentations about using it you know in the classroom um, what is it called the echo tap I have one of those that I use uh, as well for anyone that's I mean I, I mean the echo dots are a very powerful um, you know device and if anyone's looking to add an accessory I I I've been playing around with this accessory uh, it, I th- I think it's probably pronounced Vox V A U X it's like forty nine dollars and what what you do, what it is, it's basically it adds a, a battery, which then makes the dot portable, and it also is a is a is a really nice speaker. And so what happens? You take your second generation dot, and you sit it on top in the housing, and it has a cable where you plug the audio out and also the power a power cable um, in, and it will stay charged for about six hours, but. I mean, it, the the quality of the sound uh, is a big improvement, and plus it adds portability because um, you could take then you can take your dot with you and uh, in, into any room or outside that we have Wi-Fi access and uh, and use it for you know for music or for whatever else you want to do with it. So it's a it's a nice accessory for a good one to take outside with you, right? If you don't want to yes, put a dot absolutely. outside, a great way to take right. it on the outside, take it with you, listen to music, Mike, and your yeah, 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 be able to talk right to it, control. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. a lot of pieces. I mean, you know, it's kind of, it, it sounds kind of, I mean, strange, but I mean, my wife and I, we, about two years ago, we started taking a uh, ballroom dancing. And so we practice in the kitchen. And so it's just easy to say, Hey, you know, pl- you know, just play the song, you know, and it just, you know, gets, gets the song and we're, you know, we're practicing, you know, so it's little, little things like that. I mean, it's, you know, it, as much, you know, as much as we we're into this technology, it's still, still somewhat amazing that we can do all this with our voice, you know, and, uh, you know, it's it's it's. I mean, it's not perfect yet, but it's it's really get it's really getting there. It really yeah. is. One of the things I've really liked about the 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 Echo is it seems to be, or these devices, the Amazon right. devices, is that it it seems to be with the equipment that Amazon ships it with, they are constantly making improvements. And oh, absolutely. You know, Tony had put in the chat room. You know, is the 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 one drawback to these devices especially the Amazon, Amazon devices, the search is so terrible. Like it, you yeah, know, it, is. it is, is awful, right? So Tony is asking, yeah. hey, you know, do you think it's better on a Google Home? Now, I have an OnHub router, and Google has made all kinds of promises. To You know, they, they built these, these OnHub routers were $190 mm-hmm. new when we got them. Wow. And, oh, they were going to make all kinds of updates. So they overshipped the hardware and have made zero mm-hmm. updates where – Amazon mm-hmm. has underbuilt, I think, has underbuilt these devices, but has gotten more productivity mm-hmm. out of them than than right. anything. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of, you know, he'd ask, you know, do you go with the Amazon or with the uh, the Google Home? I think at this point, if you're going to do search, uh, do you do do search on Cortana or another device if you can? Yeah, I mean, it's um, getting. Yeah, I I would say ahead. probably the Google is probably. I, 
you know, from I don't personally have one because I'm I'm sort of on the Amazon, but from the, you know from folks that I've read and articles that you know Google does a better job on search, but you know uh, my understanding is that you know Amazon has hired a tremendous number of engineers to you know to build that out, but you can now say um, like you know what movies are playing you know in my area, and it you know it, it's it's getting a lot it's getting a lot better, and I think it's also getting better um, at because there is. There is still like that cognitive load. Like sometimes the skills are looking for a certain the words in a certain order to process them. And I, I noticed lately that you don't have to be as exact as you once were. It, it gets the, the the gist of what you want and it will process it correctly. So it definitely, I, I agree. I think it's getting better. They're doing. I, I mean, Amazon's spending a lot of time on on AI and and all that machine learning to take advantage of that, but. Um, I still probably most you know they're still behind. I think you know with Google, if you just ask for a general search, but the integration with so much hardware is just un I mean it's just unbelievable. I mean it's just unbelievable. I mean everyone, you know everyone on the hardware side that you speak to, you know they, they uh, I mean it used to be they used to build for Apple first. Now it's pretty much they build for Amazon first. You know with any of the home automation um, hardware. Yeah, Tony says in the chat room he's a little little upset with Amazon after they killed unlimited cloud drive. You know, I think they opened that uh, yeah. up and then have taken it away. And uh, Microsoft I, did that too, right? Totally. <laughs> I, I, don't, you know, I don't know, Tony. Is anybody offering unlimited at this point? I, it's probably a bad business plan to begin. You know, we always know unlimited is kind of a bad business plan to start with. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that doesn't work, you know, that doesn't work uh, very well. I'm interested to try this drop in any other things, uh, Brian, that you were talking, what you're thinking that came with the show, mm -hmm. any new things or any different new ways that you're using it today that you weren't, you kind of weren't using it before. I haven't played around with it, but I wanted to, I mean, it, you know, it's still, it reads Kindle books. It reads, you know, it will read audible books, which is, which is nice. I haven't tried, I mean, I've tried the immersive reading experience, on a, an Amazon Fire tablet, I haven't I haven't tried it out to see if it will actually highlight and you know put post put the words up on the screen. I have to play around with that a little bit more. Uh, Mike, any uh, are you tempted to uh, to get a show after? I mean, they've been out a while. You're a big Amazon guy. Any any, any uh, temptation there? I don't I don't have a spot to put it um, because, like I said, I have the. I have Hashtag to, first world problems. Well, man. yeah. Well, some place it would be useful to spend the money, to, I guess, to put it is more what I what I mean by that. Because in the kitchen, I don't think it could replace the iPad yet. And we have an iPad on like, it's like this cooking stand, I guess, that sits out there that we use for everything. And the Amazon uh, Echo sits right behind that. So really for me, I have both those things in the kitchen. Right. That would probably be where I put it. And so for me, just it doesn't fit well where I need it. We have dots everywhere else. Um, and putting a show there also wouldn't make sense, not some place that we would access it very often. So I think it's one of those, I mean, kind of like Brian said, where it's kind of like, oh, he had to retire one because he's got so many of these things. It really has to be a good use case for having a place with a screen. Otherwise, I think voice for us uh, works just as well because we have the iPad. I think it'd be great at the desk. I mean, it's a speakerphone. Yeah, you're right. It's it a could video be a speakerphone, right? Very and true. Yeah. Drop yeah, in I mean, would be I mean, great for that. Yeah, and if you, I mean, you know, not that you, I mean, everyone has other options, but you know, for a video, I mean, an inexpensive way to do video conferencing, um, right? It, it could be really well. And I think as more and more people start getting into, you know, putting in um, home security cameras, I think, it, you know, that that could be sort of the uh, dashboard or the, you know, That's the central thing. hub for, you know, looking at what's happening and, you know, right. in, in different areas of your home. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, it's, it's, I have thought about picking up a few more dots. I haven't at this point. I'd, I'd love to have one in our bedroom. We don't, that's really the right place for it. I keep it at the desk just because this is what I use to, you know, right. when we're demoing it on the podcast and some of those other things. Um, actually, I wonder, you know, I could, since the, since the dot is tied in through the soundboard, I could bring in somebody on a podcast because they would be hearing my voice. They wouldn't hear anybody else. Right. But they could hear me. I could talk to them and we could get their audio in. That, that would be interesting. How's the, on the drop in or on the conferencing, how's the sound quality? Is it pretty good? I mean, it's, you're using this, the same microphones it uses to get your, you know, your, uh, your audio cues. Have you tried that? I haven't, Brian? Try, I haven't tried any video conferencing yet with it. Yeah. Have you done the audio drop in just because I think it works just audio as well as a, as an intercom. You haven't done that? I, I haven't tried it, no. 
No, I got to try it. I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach Sarah how to do that, and then they don't. Like, she can just yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, come on up. <laughs> yeah, from, from the kitchen. It's interesting because I, for the longest time, I've been building kind of a dedicated Cortana box uh, to kind of compete with all these. Is is Microsoft keeping up with it? And man, this just puts Amazon another step out. You know, another step ahead. I think in this in providing this. By adding a screen, so I don't know. I I'm I would be a, at this point I'd be a little hesitant to drop another 230 just on another Amazon device. Right. I'm not sure I'm I would get all the value out of. Now I'm a geek. I'm a gadget geek, so I, I should own, I should own one. Um, but I don't know. So well, cool. So don't you don't regret? No regrets. No, uh, purchase. no regrets. It worked. I mean, it worked right out of the box, and I'm sure we're gonna see and skills that you know are tied to that you know this particular model going forward i would say in the next six months i'm sure we're going to see some possibly some more exciting things coming from amazon well we stay on amazon mike Weger's a big dash guy but they have mm-hmm. a new wand out that you're looking mm-hmm. for it's supposed to be here tomorrow i got it i wish i really would have got here today i but- know they originally originally said thursday i'm going ah oh. so it's uh, it's 20 it's 20 bucks and um my understanding is that once you register it, you get twenty dollars back. Uh, you know, if you're a Prime user to you know use uh, to purchase. I mean, I think the intent was to take the place of the uh, you know the physical dash um, clickers to order individual products. Um, the the wand also has um, a scanner so that you can use it to scan products. So if you're in your you know uh, in, in your closet, you need to replace your uh, you know your ketchup, you could scan the UPC and it will automatically you know put that into your cart. Um, then it has some of the basic functionality that the you know the Echoes and the Alexa have. Doesn't is as subset, so it doesn't have everything. But uh, my understanding is you can use it to control lights. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't uh, at this point support um, reminders or timers, I believe. But um, you know, hopefully, uh, I'll get it tomorrow and I'll be able to test out some of the uh, functionality. So it could be a good way to kind of get dip your toes into this market if you're not sure. I mean, certainly, you know, Amazon put it together as a an order taker, of, um, but uh, it does have some other the Alexa skills. Um, Built, built in. in. In the Amazon description, it says groceries have never been easier. What is this? All new Amazon Dash Wand with oh, uh, helps you find recipes, convert cups to ounces, buy and reorder essentials. This is my favorite one. Find nearby restaurants and more. In other words, you scan all your stuff and you're like, uh, hey, Amazon, what can I make? And it, she basically says, nothing. Okay, <laughs> where's the nearest? <laughs> <laughs> After that, where's the nearest? Uh, yeah, in a hamburger joint, right? Or is it a restaurant? Right? Okay, yeah. how long? Okay, order me something, you know, at whatever. Is you know, it's. Uh, I think you know we. I, I don't know if we're there yet, uh, but I've been ordering a ton of coffee on my Starbucks app. But I'm I'm not sure. Well, we use the Panera app, so I guess right. there would be another. I guess Panera has kind of embraced it. Has McDonald's, Burger King, have they embraced? Do you guys know? Uh, we didn't prep for this, but. Have we seen apps from them? It would seem like McDonald's and Burger King would be ripe for pre-orders. Mike, have you seen anything like that? Uh, Taco Bell was kind of one of the first yes, ones yeah. in the fast food industry. They they had it out there. Uh, McDonald's and Burger King, as far as I know, have not hopped on that train. I use um, um, I use Dunkin' Donuts. They have the uh, you know you can order and then pick up, which which works works pretty well. Uh, Emily says McDonald's now does Uber Eats. So oh, yeah. yeah, that would if seem. If you like, live in an area that has Uber Eats, you know we don't. We don't I'm assuming that that's someone picking up the food for you and bringing. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic out now. But, but I mean, it's going to be it's gonna really going to be interesting, you know, with um, you know uh, Amazon purchasing Whole Foods and what that you know that brings to the market in terms of del- you know delivery different delivery models. I'm right. sure that becomes their distribution channel or you know delivery within a certain you know radius of the stores. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, in that, in that space. Of all the food you would order on Uber Eats, would you <laughs> go McDonald's? I mean, like you could probably get a whole bunch of other things ordered that, you know, I don't need. Maybe- How drunk am I? I mean, what's uh, <laughs> because I think that's, that's really the only time, you know, that you're going straight McDonald's I could go for like five McDoubles right now. Yeah. Oh, Uber Eats. They'll bring uh, it to you. 
<laughs> Brian, do you know? Uh, so on this on this wand, do do I have to take advantage? Is it you know because Amazon has the two services, right? You have Prime, which orders everything that's mm. non perishable, and then you have Amazon. Mm, what's the yeah. food? What's the food pantry? No, what's Maybe the food? Yeah. What's the food one? Well, we Prime know? Pantry is where you fill up the box and you yeah Prime yeah. Prime Pantry. But can I, I do, like ketchup? Can I order that? Doesn't that go through pantry? Doesn't I think so. The and the food? hard part is you have to fill up the box, which is really right. hard to do. It actually takes quite a bit of food to fill up that box. Yeah, to get. I that tried to food. do it with a uh, formula for the baby, uh, for Emmett, and it was one of those Prime Pantry items, and I didn't want to fill up the entire box. Okay, so Brian has the right idea. He says, I ordered uh, Old South Pancakes House via Uber Eats. Biscuits and gravy delivered. Uh, if you're going to do delivery. <laughs> go, one of the best use cases I've heard for it. Go full of full heart attack. Uh, yeah, I know. You might as well. I, that'd be great if you could get Uber Eats Waffle House. Like, how good how good would that be? Of course, there, oh, yeah. it's all Mike Howard's fault. There's not a Waffle House in Omaha, so I can't really do that, yeah. but... So what do you, um, Brian, from, a, from a, a wand standpoint, when you think about your use case, what do you think you'll use it the most on? What will it really provide convenience for? And did you use the dash buttons before? I didn't use the dash buttons, but I figured for 20 bucks, I can check it out and see uh, what applications it, you know, it might, um, it might have. Even, even for students that I work with, for, you know, who have, you know, um, both reading and writing disabilities, the ability to, you know, ask, even ask Wikipedia you know, for information or even to spell words with your voice uh, for 20 bucks, it could be a really interesting, uh, interesting tool. I'm going to have to, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure that it can read Kindle books and things like that, but for, you know, maybe looking up basic information, things of that sort, I'm thinking that maybe it has a, a use case. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, you might be surprised. This actually, I was talking with someone and they were talking about, this isn't the first time, Amazon has pushed out this kind of wand device. I think this mm -hmm. is actually the second gen right, of a, yes. a, a device that failed earlier, Correct. or they yes. just didn't roll it. Right and now, they're kind of rolling it out, it's, which is interesting. That and I'm trying. Yeah. To, where did I? I talked with somebody about that. Shoot. Um, so interesting. Hey, it's a twenty dollar. This is great. It's a twenty dollar deal. You get the twenty back on. Back. I think every geek probably every gadget geek needs to have this because you're gonna. It's free, right, Mike? You gonna you gonna order this thing? Well, it's like the dash buttons. They were free too. And I, yeah, I probably will order one now. Yeah. yeah so I will probably, I will it probably. was, um, it was back ordered. I, I was, I was hoping, like I said, I was hoping to get it before the show, but it was back ordered. Uh, it took about, you know, well, it took about 10 days for them to fulfill the order. So, um, evidently it was, you know, once it started rolling out, it was in, in demand because of the, the price. Yeah. Well, let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to go in right now. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's see. Delivery date. Guaranteed delivery date is July 9th. So, oh wow, I mean, they're back. It. Yeah, they're back I mean, in the uh, back in the plant there. Huh? Uh, if I want it Saturday, <laughs> so if I want it Saturday, nine dollars. If okay. I want it Sunday, free. Right, and then really, if I, yeah. If I want to go the free standard shipping, that's next Thursday. And then okay. if I want, it's Monday the seventeenth for free, no rush shipping, and I get a five dollar. Well, maybe that's the way to go. You get this five dollar reward for for Prime Pantry, which Prime Prime Pantry isn't that like five ninety nine anyways or six ninety nine something like that. I think it is. So buy the dash button, have it sent slow boat with that, and so you get a twenty dollar credit, and you would get your first Prime Pantry. Wow, free! I just cracked the code. Boom. So I mean, you could try both. I mean, that way, and then you could, you know, it's. It, I'm, it, it's I'm getting mine on Sunday. All right. <laughs> so for, you know, I mean, just already ordered. <laughs> Screw for someone thoughts. that wants to, <laughs> for someone that even wants to jump into home automation, I mean, you could buy, you know, either you know a light bulb with Wi-Fi built in, or even a switch, and then use this to control it. So it could be a you know a way to put your toes in the water without making a big investment, just to get a feel for what it would be like to use it. The other thing is you have to physically. Um, it looks like, you know, from the videos, tap, you know, tap, hold the button down, you know, before you give it the command, you know, so it's, uh, there's a, you know, physical piece a little to bit. it as well. Yeah. Mike, Mike Howard just jumped in. I think his ears were, I think, it, you know, he was hearing me talk about him, but he said, dang, I'm late, but I just heard a little, uh, picked up the echo show last week 
and the wand the week before the, sh uh, the show is awesome he says i'm assuming he's saying the show home gadget geeks no, of course we, we, I know we knew that, that. I know, yeah, of course <laughs> that's what he really means that show is awesome too um i have not used the wand much at all also we have six of the dash buttons okay and he says he has the show hooked up to his ring camera do you have a oh, ring okay. front door camera brian no i don't i don't have you, no. okay Okay. Yeah, it's that'd be a perfect. Probably, you know, yeah. yeah, in the home <laughs> automation space, that would be a perfect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's exactly where they're getting in there. And you know, today you got to kind of, it's on your computer, or, you know, or whatever, your iPad, and, your phone. Yeah. 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 And Amazon's done so well with home automation integration, and of course, controlling those devices with voice, and so. Man, that is a really nice. <laughs> that is a really, really, really nice kind of use yes. case. So, so pretty Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Mike, we'll have to report back next week when you get your wand because you're a Dash user. Love the dashes. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's funny. Everyone I tell about them, so they could care less about all the home automation I have. Lights. Yeah. Old news. Whatever. Old news. Wait. I can press a button. <laughs> when I'm about to use the last roll of toilet paper and it'll show up in two days. Like for some reason, the dash buttons get the biggest response. Cause like, Oh, Hey, I heard you have a, like a quote, like you have a smart home. Like, tell me about what you have. Tell them about the cameras. Tell them about all this stuff. No, the dash buttons, <laughs> it's the wow yeah. factor. And I'm like, that's the thing I don't even think about very much, but for them, they think that's the coolest thing. They don't even know they exist. Uh, I think if Amazon pimped them a little more, more people would be interested, especially the fact that they're free. When I tell them, hey, you pay five bucks, but it takes five bucks off the first order, um, everyone's kind of like, oh, wow. So I don't know why people don't know about them, but they're very excited about them when I, when I tell them about it. All right. Which, pro I, which products do you use most of the time with the dash button? So our laundry detergent is probably the number one used. Uh, well, no, toilet paper is number one used. Um, right. Put, you know, you put paper, it right towel. paper towels. Yep. So we have Bounty, yeah, yeah. Charmin, Tide. Right. Uh, we had Gatorade that we were using for a while until we kind of stopped drinking that as much. Right. Um, we had Pop Tarts, and when Hannah's pregnant, that button gets pressed a lot. Uh, when she's not, it doesn't get pressed as much. <laughs> um, uh, but besides that, I'm trying to think of all the other buttons we have, but maybe the other ones we don't. Oh, and uh, Clorox wipes. So for Clorox, okay. Clorox and, all those. Yeah. And do they guarantee the lowest price but when you push the button? Or do, is there a chance that you can review it somewhere? Before? So, you, or, you know, the price is interesting. I have not really confirmed if the price changes. You select the right. product, right. Um, obviously, ahead of time. I've, I haven't checked if the price changes very much. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. Okay. That's, that's always been the concern, right, is that you would get so used to clicking these and then Amazon right. would jack the price up. So um, at this point, yeah, I wouldn't even care. <laughs> in the chat room, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this says about our listeners, but there's lots of toilet paper being discussed in the uh, in the chat room. Oh god! About what they use their dash buttons for, and uh, and so that seems real popular. Emily, a uh, one you know, Mark came on. Mark's been on oh, the, the show Cliff before. Bar one. Yeah, that's all I have. I have the Cliff Bar one. That one's used a lot too. I forgot about that one. Love the Cliff Bar one. That's a great. Yeah. That's a great way to to get that done. I I have a I keep a box in a drawer at work. That's my after workout kind of treat you know hey he did a workout okay monkey boy <laughs> dance, dance. Here's, your, here's, your, here's your chocolate for working out right and uh, hey whatever works right whatever right. gets me in the fitness center and um it gets down to two and i just know log in on my computer right there order you know find the right brian to your point find the right, right price point order the set because sometimes it makes sense to order them in sets of 18 sometimes it makes sense to order them in 12 you know, because mm -hmm. the prices are just all over it's the place. place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, well, I ordered the dash button, but I took the five dollar pantry. So, well, okay. well, that won't be here for a while, but uh, I'm going to give it a try, and and I'm going to try. I'm going to sit down with Sarah, and we're going to do an Amazon order. She has always been super skeptical of the like. You know, Walmart does this, and I, I think some of the other grocery stores where. You can have your orders ready. I think Hy-Vee does this here in the Midwest, Mike, where you can order your thing on the app. Yep. You get there, they pack it up, boom, you're done. Order. They actually deliver it straight to our door. Yeah. Yep. So, or, or you can do pickup. Yep. It's never worked for us. So for really? whatever reason, what she wants and some of those things, it's just it's just a nightmare. So we'll try the we'll try the Amazon pantry one time. Maybe you yeah, know sure. go through and and see what that's like with a five dollar uh, with five dollar credit. That'll work out. Pretty cool. All right. 
Uh, so Brian, let's talk. You got a few more gadgets before we get out of here, and we've got okay. a few minutes left. So bring the the seat. Was it the C pen or what? Bring, yeah, show me the C pen. That's a new that's a new gadget that you got. Yeah, now I'm you're in the assistive around. you're in the assistive tech space. I should tell you, right. A lot of your role is to help students and people with with disabilities correct use technology to make their life better and learn more. So correct that yeah. in mind. Talk about your pen. Okay, so this is the. Um, this is the C pen, and it's basically a personal scanner. And you know, I've been in the field for about 30 years, and you know, I've, been, I've used various devices similar to this. But this would allow students to scan a line of text and then have it read aloud to them. Uh, it has a you know an, uh, audio out, so they can you know put their earbuds or a head headphones on and listen to it. This one also has a um, a dictionary, and but this you know the scanning. Has gotten so much better. So you know the engine inside, the the camera lens, all that all that stuff, and and the processing power and the amount of memory in here too is great. You can actually store things in here as well. So for a student who has, you know, or an adult even who has difficulty with decoding or dyslex, diagnosed with dyslexia, this could be a great tool for them to be independent. The company has um, a couple of different versions. This one. Um, you know, can read the text and also has an online dictionary so students can look up the meaning of words. But a lot of times students with disabilities, uh, you know, both high school uh, and, and colleges, uh, when they're taking tests, they often have um, a, a proctor who may read the test to them, um, the question. So this would allow the students to do this uh, it, rather independently. And so some of the versions of the C-Pen uh, don't have the dictionary functionality, only the reading uh, functionality. Um, so it could be a really handy tool uh, for those students who um, have difficulty with decoding or even reading speed. Um, so it's it's great. It's very portable and you know allows in, you know allows students to be independent um, when they're in, you know in school or studying and things of that sort. So so Brian, about two fifty. How do you find that really? Uh, what's the f effective way in a in a learning situation? That's pretty expensive. Do students well, get? Are there programs where they can they get that bot for them? How, how does that? Is there grant money? How does that? How do you see that work for for a lot of students? For I mean, for you know, for some students, you know, in K twelve, if that was um, you know decided that that was the best fit for that student, then the school district would be responsible for picking up the the cost of it. Um, in many cases, you know, schools do budget for assistive technology, whether it be a computer or a device like this. Whatever kind of you know really helps the that individual um, you know do what they're supposed to do, and that's really access the curriculum. Uh, but you will you know when you get to the college level, then it's uh, it's incumbent upon the student to purchase it with their dollars, and they're going to have to make you know that judgment if it works. I mean. At the college level, too, I mean, there's certainly, there are, you know, our apps where, you know, I can use my iPhone and take a picture and it will start reading, too. So, I mean, there are, you know, competing technologies out there. You have to, you know, students need to figure out which one makes the most sense. In some cases, you know, phones aren't allowed in certain testing, you know, in testing situations and things like that. So, you know, this, this device may be something that could be helpful in that scenario. But there are others where you can, like I said, Take a picture with your iPhone and it starts, or an Android phone, and it starts reading um, the text immediately, which is nice. And you know that the app on the iPhone, Android phone, is about a hundred dollars. That can that's not too bad. So that'd be a good alternative. Yes. What are you What are you seeing in the in the students that you're working with? What's the most popular, or is there kind of a most popular app or most popular tool to help with that? Or is the are the issues so varied? It just kind of depends. Well, how, how's it well, working it, in that it, space? It depends, but I mean, I think you know because everything's been digital. I mean, services like Bookshare or services like Learning Ally can provide uh, generally students with text that's been digitized already. So um, students may not need some of these tools, so they can you know hop on an iPad or an iPhone and use a program like Voice Dream Reader. Or they can use a Learning Ally um, has their own app that allows would allow the students to listen to human narrated audiobooks, um, and Bookshare um, has their own Chrome extension, and there are also third party companies that um, you know can provide uh, you know reading tools to access uh, some of the, the Bookshare library. So I mean, there's lots of different ways to go about you know doing it um, um, in today's environment, which is really exciting. 
Mike, you had done something during law school, right? You were you you converted, you took text and converted it to speech because you wanted to listen to it, which is brilliant, by the way. How did you do yeah, that? What, yeah. what did you use, Mike, to get that done? When you were uh, there's just an app on the Mac, so any sort of it worked especially well with PDF. So the one problem I ran into that Brian actually had suggested, I never got into it, but was scanning it from a book. Uh, but I would just take any PDFs. A lot of times our professors were sending us extra material to read, or you could find PDF versions or whatever you needed, or you could even scan in the pages from a book, convert to PDF, um, and as long as it could read the text. And there was just apps, you know, voice to, or text to voice. They were really bad. It was monotone, that computer woman's voice. But as if I could take my 30 minute drive to school and have it be considered reading and get material in, it helped me out. I would uh, change the voice to an Australian woman, and then I could listen to it. All there day. you go. Not yes. stop. All day. Not I just changed stop. that on my phone, on my iPhone. We were messing around, and I'm, I'm a stock guy. I never change anything. I always keep everything as stock as possible. And we were goofing around on Sunday. I found Australian woman. I'm hooked. So yeah. I talk to her more now than anybody else. I'd actually <laughs> use and I'm talking to her all the time. Siri, can you yeah. just say more things? Yeah. I don't know if you found it to be true, Mike, but one of the one of the really interesting things with audio is that over time you can listen to things much faster with really good comprehension. And that's what right. happens. And especially students with reading disabilities, um, you know, they, they may start out at reading at a certain rate and before too long they're able to listen at twice that rate you know as they get used to with with good comprehension and oh, totally. so it just it allows them to you know keep up you know with the volume of work that they need to um, we have our yearly training for work and for one of the classes i signed up for you have to read a it was a whole book and it was actually a really right. interesting book but um because i've gotten used to that doing podcasts and audio books right. all right. the time that's all i listen to i was able to go at 2x speed which is right. pretty fast yeah uh, mm -hmm. i usually i prefer if i'm just casually listening 1.25 or 1.5, but I had to get through it really quick because it was down to the last second and 2x. And yeah, you're totally right. You can comprehend it a lot better. And then it's interesting too, um, especially if you do it while you're driving, if your scenery changes while you're listening to audio, mm -hmm. there will be certain spots around Omaha or even between Omaha and Kansas City, Omaha and the farm, places I drive a lot. I'll be driving and I will see something and it will spark. I can tell you exactly where I was at in a certain book, what was happening at that point. Um, just because, you know, you got those two forms of, of input and then they're both kind of, you know, so I, I have those sort of memories too, which helps. So I kind of, okay, no, that was on Dodge Street and I remember this and, and especially for law school tests, right. there was all these tricks to remember that sort of material. Yeah. Uh, Brian, you also, yes. uh, you, you were, you showed me a, a whiteboard device yes. that, uh, that has some, some collaboration work with it. And, you know, these smart boards that came out 10 years ago, super expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, that CPEN 250, what's, how much is, tell us what this device is and about it, what it retails at. This, this, this one that I'm holding up? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it lists, I, I, they always kind of discount. I think it lists for about $799. So this is called the uh, eBeam Smart Marker 2. Um, you would affix this uh, to a whiteboard. It has a magnet, so if your whiteboard's magnetized, you can just affix it. If not, you it, they do have a um, um, a little uh, little fixture that you can attach with adhesive strips uh, to a standard whiteboard, and then you turn it on, and it's got memory built in, um, or you can pair it with any. Uh, Android or iPhone or Bluetooth tablet. Um, one of the nice things, this is the second iteration of this, and they really got the, you know, the, the you know, the Bluetooth um, uh, finding your device very easily. Uh, and it, even if you don't have a device, it has memory. So you turn it on, and then you take um, this marker that's in this housing. It's just a, let's see, dry erase marker in this housing, and then anything you write gets captured and stored on this device. Um, but the exciting part is that you can broadcast your whiteboard sessions with anyone by providing them with a link and inviting them to the session. And in, um, in this version, there's also the, um, uh, with permission from the presenter, uh, you can actually collaborate in real time. So what you see on your computer or uh, tablet, you have a set of tools that you can actually draw type text um, and uh, provide feedback. So you could, you know, imagine you'd have some engineers doing a whiteboarding session in California. You know, Jim, you're in Nebraska and I'm here in New Jersey. We all could be watching 
the whiteboarding, you know, session, and uh, you know, we could also have input and give them feedback in real time. And then when you're done, everything can be stored out as a um, as a PDF file, which so you've captured all the different screens, um, you know, as as well. So it's it's kind of a interesting device, especially for you know, I'm thinking. And some of the work that I do, um, you know, students who may be homeschooled um, could be, you know, interesting, like for a math class or a science class. And then the other potential, too, is if you have someone with a visual impairment, I'd be able to, in a sense, broadcast to the student's device that they could then also magnify um, as well. And it runs on Windows, Macs, Android, and iOS. And there's... Uh, all the apps have a basically similar tool set, so it's kind of um, it's kind of nice. How, how big is the range? So you you stick that to the whiteboard. It's magnetic, right? Yeah. I think how, it, how wide is the range? I think it's six. I want to. Uh, I have to. I'd have to look, but I think it's like sixteen feet. Does it say? I mean, I, I yep, you're right. Sixteen by five. Oh, 16 by five. Okay. Yeah. And you, if you, I mean, if you needed bigger, you could actually purchase another one of these devices to extend the length of my understanding if I remember correctly. Yeah, so 16 by 5 and then it says 8 feet by 5 feet on each side of the sensor. So you okay. can it sounds like you could put that in the middle hmm. and then right. you could go out 8 feet on either side and 5 feet high and draw around it. Man that's a great so that's, kind of that's a very film. cool collaboration. I mean, it, it's I mean it weighs it weighs like next to nothing. I mean it's pretty pretty incredible yeah. um but uh this is version two and they really did a fantastic job with the you know the, the the bluetooth pairing i mean you don't you don't have to physically go into your settings it just it it's got this uh bluetooth seeking technology you know that it hands off to the device and finds it and then you're up and running but again even if you don't have it you can basically fix this and i've actually um i've been trying this out there are a number of companies that have created i think one is called thinkboard where basically these um, uh, lamin um, these white whiteboards that you, you affix to a wall it has like a very light adhesive. So I've actually used it with this in my office, and it works well. So if you don't have a big whiteboard, you can just roll this out and attach it to it uh, with the little there's a little clip that you can attach with strips since it's not magnet um, and and use it. So it's kind of a neat it's kind of a neat device. Really oh, about four hundred is for that for that one. This one is eight hundred, but I think they're discounting now. I think you can get it for four hundred on Amazon right now. I think there's a July fourth promotion. Uh, oh, nice! So, yeah, so it's kind of wow, kind of nice. Yeah, interesting. It's really interesting. Interesting technology to you know have in your toolkit. That's for sure. Yeah, it, it, you know, we always think you mentioned this um, example. All these companies always show these. They're sharing these complex math equations right. and it's right. engineering students, right? right. I was, I was, that's just the, the most overused stereotype for a whiteboard, yes. right? When, yes. you know, but, but I, for me, oftentimes we're collaborating and I'm writing lists of things. Okay. And that's it just sometimes it's just handy to think through it visually. We were talking about how sometimes when you listen to books and you're in a different area, you make that trigger that connection, that memory connection between right. what you saw and what you heard. I think the same is true when we think about a uh, list writing or list making or some of those things that when you're sitting down and you're physically writing that and it's visual to you, mm -hmm. I have a, uh, for, for my interns, when we're, when I'm making the lists of those that are joining us for the summer, right. those all go on a whiteboard and they all, I, I need to visually see it because for the next three months, I'm going to be recalling that that mm -hmm. list in my mind and I could have it in my computer, but right. I, I, I want to kind of be able to recall or have that visual image of it. And so that kind of makes sense. So even in this kind of scenario, this might be, you know, where I would sit down and I might want to map that list with somebody or walk them through that or a list of tasks uh, required for a project that we're working on and who's going to work on them. That mm -hmm. would be another, I, I could think of even in the agile project, management methodology for software development where you're you got a project manager who's listing out the tasks and developers can be picking up those through the right. you know if you're if you're in different locations could be picking up or taking those tasks by writing on their phone right tablet whatever and Brian any besides the complex engineer scenario any other scenarios as you think about what you do in, in yeah, I mean, classroom. you said homeschool. Any other thoughts? Homeschool. Yeah, I mean, for students with visual impairments, again, I'll just use a it could be any class, science or math. 
Um, what's it, what's nice is that um, you know the, the teacher could be broadcasting um, what they're writing on the whiteboard to that student, and the student would be able to actually you know zoom into an area and enlarge it you know at their desk so that they could you know take advantage of what the student is uh, what the teacher is writing up on the board. And for a lot of a lot of students I work with, note taking is very challenging. Um, and so in a scenario where maybe a teacher didn't have a smart board, they could at least capture the you know the handwritten notes for the day right on there and then transfer them you know to a you know PDF and then share it out through you know like Google you know Google Classroom or OneNote for that matter. Um, so that's that's nice. Mike, any in your you know you're collaborating, you're working on stuff, you're off, off you're doing complex things as you think through any any space where you might say yeah it'd be nice to slap this on the board, connect with some folks in other cities collaborate on something? Yeah, definitely. Um, especially because we have teams that are on site at the client and then you'll have teams that are either working in the office or out of town and being able to do all that at once. Um, the hard part is we're, we're in the client space a lot. A lot of times we're officing out of the client. So, so something that's portable would be super nice. Uh, but yeah, it, it would really affect things, I think, because we love using whiteboards. And then we all end up trying to do like, you know, on the computer and draw it out with the mouse. It never <laughs> works. And you can't just draw it out super quick. I think things take a lot longer the way we try to do them sometimes. But with the whiteboard and just be able to truly draw it by hand and have others see it, yeah. I think that'd be a game changer. Yeah, the other part too is, I mean, if you don't need that, I mean, if you don't need the interactivity and you you just want it to capture, you can literally, you know, come in, stick it on the board, turn it on. You don't even have to connect it to a device and just, you know, do your drawings. And there's a big button when you, you know, it would allow you to erase and get to the next page so that you can have multiple screens. And then yeah. when you go back, and then when you go back to your office, you can download it to your Mac, your Windows, your iPad. It just comes in, so um, you know. So it's got it's got memory for storage of uh, you yeah. know images as well. I've done it the cheap way, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's what we do too. It's what you do. You can't interact. That's what you, know, you do. You, you can't yeah. interact that way, and that's pretty cool. That's that's why we do this yeah. show is to kind of highlight. Brian, one last question for you as you think ahead. I always ask you sure. kind of what are you looking for in the future? What as you look out ahead over the next year or two? Any products in your space, in assistive tech space, or, or or maybe even outside of it, that you're anxiously awaiting for? Um, I I mean I think you know the t the tool set has gotten so much better, and um, everything that most of the publishers are doing now um, is coming through uh, you know through a, a Chrome a Chrome browser. So I'm sure we'll see more increased functionality. Um, I, I I'd still I think. For you know some of the students that we work with, I think um, you know uh, that you know, the voice technology can be very empowering, and I, I think eventually, um, you know, things like virtual reality is going to find it's going to find a, a space in schools. I'm not sure, you know, quite yet how it's going to happen, but I think that's that has tremendous potential um, for schools. And you know, as Apple builds out their platform and Microsoft um, you know, and Google, I, I think we're gonna see some interesting applications um, for you know, all kinds of different uh, you know, educational scenarios. Yeah, we we didn't think the voice space would ever, you know, talk to our computers. You know, we we mm -hmm. we we saw it on TV and it was hokey at right. first. It didn't work very well. Right. Finally, I think that's, I mean, it's pretty entrenched at this point, and it's only going to get better. I think you're right, VA, VR, AR, or mixed reality yeah. is what Microsoft's yeah. calling yeah. it right now. Um, yeah. I think it's we, uh, yeah. it's going to find and, its place, right? Yeah. That's what it needs to. And, and you know, for, you know, we, you know, we sometimes forget the number of, you know, uh, individuals who are, you know, physically disabled, and for them to be able to control their environment with, whether it be switches, a voice, um, is really very empowering, you know. So I think, you know, as these tools become more, you know, I guess more stable, um, you know, it's gonna they're gonna be, you know, play a much more important role. I mean, we even have, I mean, I've tried this with students that use augmentative communication devices, where they're giving um, Madame um, commands through their augmentative communication device, and uh, Alexa is able to respond in kind. So. You know, imagine the potential. You know, for, for those scenarios. So a lot of people, I don't. Uh, my, you know, my specialty is not, not home automation, but a lot of my colleagues that wear environmental control is their specialty. 
they're you know they're they're looking to you know the Google Home and the Amazon Echoes as a as a place to begin to build the environmental controls for individuals in their home, whether it be through different you know smart switches or motion detectors or you know all kinds of different. Um, you know, uh, you know, tools to improve their uh, ability to control their environment that you know you and I may take for granted. It may be cool to be able to tell our nest to raise or lower the temperature, but someone in a wheelchair, it's essential. You know, so they can you know either use a voice or use an augmented communication device as their voice to do the the kinds of things that you know you and I do. You know, we take for granted and we can we can do. So I think the, you're seeing big shifts uh, because. In the past, when you mentioned environmental control, you were talking about thousands and thousands of dollars of very proprietary specialized equipment. And now you can go in with a, a $49 dot and you know and a switch and do something that you know literally costs thousands of dollars not too long ago. So it's really exciting to to see what's happened uh, in this space. Yeah, no, indeed. Well, Brian, thank you for coming on. Hang tight oh, a little a bit pleasure. as we kind of wrap things up. I just kind of yeah. noticed usually Mike is in blue and I'm in red, and tonight reverse it uh, up this, a little bit. <laughs> this is exactly not great in colors uh, tonight, but uh, yeah, it's pretty close. What the hell's going on with us, Uger? I don't uh, <laughs> flying, you know. You're really you're nice. forgetting Apple, the names of Apple products, right? And, uh, you know. Pretty soon, I'm going to know what's going on at WWDC, and you're going to be a Windows Insider MVP. <laughs> I think that's the way this is going. Isn't that the direction we're headed? <laughs> I, I kind of do feel that way. I, I as mentioned earlier, my my uh, my band is just. I think it's getting close to being DOA, and uh, I may go. I may go Apple Watch. That may be yeah. the next thing that I that I do. So, well, uh, as we kind of wrap things up, don't, don't forget, stay around for a little bit of post-show, okay. Brian, you can hang with us as long as you can. We're okay. Mike's got a topic for post-show, but we, we don't want to take too much of your time, but okay. I'll remind everyone, if you want to support the show, best way to do that is through the Patreon link that's out there. If you're not comfortable doing that, just make sure you're using the Amazon affiliate link. If you could be so kind to get that done, it's back, it's working. We'd love to have you do it. Mike used it to pick up the mattress and it's working apparently. Uh, and so head out to theaverageguy.tv and click on the the. There's an Amazon banner there on the right hand side, and you can purchase straight uh, through there. Don't forget, you can send me an email, Jim at theaverageguy.tv. You can track me down on Twitter at Jay Collison. A lot more Twitter conversations. Uh, so if you're out there on Twitter and you want to chat that way, I've been spending a lot more time on it. So especially Saturday mornings, by the way, I do ask the podcast coach with Dave Jackson, but I'm around most Saturday mornings producing this podcast. So if you want to get a hold of me and chat in real time, a good way to do it, Saturday mornings on Twitter. Love to have you out there. Don't forget the Average TV platform, both web and media hosting, powered by Maple Grove Partners. Christian's actually making some more upgrades to the network over there, adding some DDR4 memory. And he's like, Jim, I just don't think I can push our hardware any faster. <laughs> uh, to hear that from Christian was like, wow. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think that was possible. And they have reached, they, they've reached kind of the, theoretical max speed at this point with what's going on over there. But if you're thinking of doing a website, especially a podcast, uh, they, they do that. Plans start at 10 bucks, and you get Dynamite WordPress hosting and some great support from that standpoint, media and your uh, your web uh, hosting. Um, it's awesome stuff. 10 bucks a month. You can't, you can't beat it. Head out to maplegrovepartners.com. By the way, I redid the ad on the average guy.tv. So if you want to critique me on that was my own that's my own work. So head out this pretty plain. It's just black. It says Maple Grove. <laughs> so I, was, head out I actually just noticed that and I was gonna ask if he created that and put it for you. That's really funny you mentioned that because I know yeah, what do you week. think? A little critique. I like it. It. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, yeah it's a little canva in about seven minutes. There that, you go. That's about what I got there. So uh head out there if you're interested in Maple Grove or you need more information maplegrovepartners.com Dot com. Don't forget, two weeks, Amber will be on from LastPass. If you got questions, you can't make the live show, send them to me, Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. She'll be on, some new changes coming on, some really cool stuff coming in their website. If you're not a LastPass user, you should be. And, of course, they sponsor the show. We appreciate the work that they do to continue to sponsor us and the mobile app. You can uh, head out to LastPass.com and give that a shot. Erin, are you still out there? She had uh, she had headed out there. It doesn't look like – looks like she dropped out. She – when Aaron Lawrence was on, we talked a little bit about LastPass, and she was going to give it a try. I thought I'd get maybe a little feedback from her. So uh, we, uh, we we appreciate their support of the show. Don't forget, we're live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at TheAverageGuy.tv live. And we'll be back um, 
next week, Mike, we got some really cool stuff uh, coming up. Uh, oh, actually, Amber's here next week, and then two weeks is the grilling show. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to miss Mark and Mike here to talk about some grilling tech. It's going to be good. Eat before you come to the podcast. No kidding, just right? saying. Eat before you come to the podcast. Then Tony Chang is going to join us for Morrow Data, M-O-R-R-O, Morrow Data. The, 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 the founder of Morrow Data is actually the guy that helped build ReadyNAS. And so if you've, uh, if you've ever worked with ReadyNAS, we're working on maybe getting him on the show too. So it'd be kind of cool to have him on there. We'll talk a little bit about what it takes to do some NAS stuff. And we're going to do a product demo. They've sent me a one terabyte cached server, which is kind of cool. And we're going to talk a little bit about that after. So we got some great shows coming up for you. 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern. You're not here at theaverageguy.tv slash live. Stay around for the post show if you're live. With that, we'll say goodnight, everybody. Brian, if you need to bail, I know we've had you, we've had you long enough. If you need to bail, we can let okay. you go. What's that? What are you? What are you going to be? Discussing? Oh, if you need to go, Mike and I are going to just sit around and clown around with the <laughs> with the chat room. But right. uh, but uh, we've good. we've had you an hour and some change, so I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to take too much of your time. Thanks, Thanks for coming on. Great job. I appreciate Lux. it. Yeah. Have a good one. Take care, Mike. No. Yeah. We'll Take see. Care. We'll see you again, Brian. Thanks a ton. Yeah. Have a great yeah. summer. You bet. You bet. We'll see you next time. Yep. Mike, you've been messing around. Talk to me. How in the heck did you find? All right. So. Here's the context. You got a new server. Yeah. And you're excited about it. I'm excited. It's a Windows server. <laughs> it's a Windows server. I'm not excited about the energy cost. Is it? So, did you put a kilowatt meter on it? Have you been? Uh, it's got one. Um, okay. So draw is about 188. Oh, it's not too. Yeah. Okay. Not That's too bad. Okay. But a couple, a couple really bad light bulbs. Right. But okay. <laughs> yeah. A lot <laughs> of really bad light bulbs. So you take that. You say, okay, 300 and I think 375 watt is my entire rack that is that that's thirty dollars a month to run in omaha so i mean that's that's a lot of power it's a lot of money so uh this started out with literally a simple google search of how to make money with a home server like i'm thinking okay what do i host what do i do it was a soup it was just a stupid thing and so i found actually okay hold on before you do that i'm going to get an answer before you're going to let leak this yeah. out so i got some home server guys still out there listening live there was a data, and I can, I'm can i embarrassed I can't remember this. There was a, a host provider that we talked about on Home Server Show a lot where you could rent out basically hard drive space and they would send files. This company would send files. You couldn't see them. They were encrypted. And then you, and so it was a way of distributed. Everybody would kind of share the load in the community of these backups. And I, for the life of me, cannot remember what the name of that service was. So I'm... Chat room, I'm turning it over to you. There's some home server show nerds out there who, I, for the life of me, I can't remember what that product was. Mike, what did you find? Uh, yeah, so I found this company called StoreJ, S-T-O-R-J dot I-O. Um, and uh, essentially what they're based on is exactly what Jim just said, kind of the distributed computing, or not computing, distributed storage aspect of things and they use the blockchain to achieve this. So uh, when you think of a blockchain, you normally think of Bitcoin. So pretty much a distributed database sort esque uh, is how the blockchain works. And essentially what this does is uh, you sign up and you download the application to your computer and you are volunteering up your hard drive space. So you say, okay, the, you know, use this drive, use this much space and they pay you in their own form of Ethereum coin called StoreJX. So you get paid in Ethereum for your usage, which is essentially your gigabit, um, gigabyte hour is kind of how they do it. So think of like a kilowatt hour. They have a similar calculation for gigabyte hour. And so what, basically this is the farming side is what we're talking about. But StoreJ is essentially trying to compete with the Amazons, right? The, the the massive storage conglomerates that people can store their data with. Uh, I don't think we're necessarily going after the consumer. Uh, I don't think this will replace Dropbox. It, maybe it will, but I don't think that's their target market. Uh, there's rumors that Mega Upload is actually going to start using StoreJ as their storage. So this just got out of beta at the end of 2016. And so now it's out of beta and you can go and configure it 
and it, it's kind of interesting. It's a very simple GUI. They actually just uploaded or updated the GUI today. So if you jump in, um, you can actually go and look at the payments. They just they show publicly what their payments are to each uh, Ethereum address. So when you set up these nodes. There is no email address. There is no account. You have no account with them. You have nothing. What you give them is your Ethereum coin address. And when you go and look, when they publish their payments, you can go and see they publish them by Ethereum address only. So that is essentially your ID. Uh, so you can go out there and check who's getting paid, how much, how many, you know, gigabit or giga, whatever hours they had and how much they're getting paid. So uh, extremely interesting and I like the aspect though of distributed computing. So the way this works sounds very similar to what Jim was talking about earlier, but they they take the file. So if someone has a file, they cut it up into shards and they encrypt it before it goes over the network. And then, um, so you've got all these tiny little shards and they distribute it out to all their farmers. So you have an encrypted bit of a file. So you don't even have the whole file. You have a small chunk of it and that is encrypted. So, um, so pretty secure, pretty fast when you think about distributing that over a wide network and you're pulling those shards from a bunch of different computers instead of one. And then uh, they're redundant too. So those shards are distributed maybe to two or three farmers instead of just to one of them. And just kind of an overall very interesting type of project. I kind of like playing with it, playing around, seeing what I can do with it. Um, there's a lot of custom settings. So the one thing, uh, documentation wise, I mean, this is definitely for the advanced user. This is not for, um, th this is not something that I don't think the average person could run. Number one, you kind of need some servers, computers that are on 24 seven. Number two, there's just a lot of editing of certain config files and things like that to make it run correctly. Uh, but um, your electric bill is, $30 per month, but you make 30 cents per month from a store day. Yeah. Well, so, so that's the thing, right? Is how, how much are these people making? Uh, depends on how much you're willing to offer up and how much actually gets used. So I offered up five terabytes and possibly could be making, I think about $30 a month, but we'll, we'll see how, how that goes. Five terabytes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, five terabytes depends on the bandwidth, right? So if you get a bunch of users, which they call contracts, um, if you get a bunch of users who are accessing their data quite a bit, you, you actually, the money is in the bandwidth. So you storing the file doesn't make you much money. What makes you money is if you have a user that's streaming the video from um, the storage or accessing that file at a time, changing files, because the bandwidth is kind of where you make the money. So I, So I guess we'll see where it goes, but it's a very, very interesting project. I really like it. I've actually spent um, a way more time than I want in their chat. They pretty much have a Slack. It's not Slack, it's called Rocket Chat, but it looks exactly like Slack. They have a Slack chat, um, four different channels. You can talk about your the payouts, you can talk about kind of storage, and it's, it's awesome. It's like a big chat room for all the users that are in there. Great part about it, it's small enough that, um, that they can go ahead and still have those kind of chat rooms without it being annoying. So, uh, so yeah, a, a lot of fun. I know that was just a little rant on storage, but something that if you have a bunch of extra storage lying around and you are technical and like playing around with this stuff like I do, it's it's a lot of fun to play with and, and easy to get in. Uh, but then the configuration, I'll just warn you, can be a little bit uh, tedious at times. In what sense? Uh, just like, okay, so the, the, all their settings are manual on offs and certain ones can conflict. So uh, I had... I did it with port forwarding. So you have to, so each node has its own port and what they don't tell you. And I kind of post this in the Facebook group. So the GUI does not do, their GUI is not robust enough to walk you through all of the setup. It does a, a great job of just getting you in, but if you really want to get in and actually do it right, you need to go into the config files and edit them yourself, which they have good documentation on. Uh, but for example, each node, and so a node is, hey, here's a node, here's a hard drive, you can take this much space, pay out to this Ethereum address. Every node has those components, you know, where um, where am I storing it, where do I pay you, That those sort of things. So for example, I have three nodes on one computer, I have, you know, three different sets of hard drives that it can, it can write to. And you just it tells you to just pick one port. So on one I picked, and it starts you out at 4,000. So I picked 4,000, I picked 4,001, 4,002. And thinking that that was okay, but it doesn't tell you that in the back end, if you go in the config file, 
it'll take the first one you say. So if I say 4,000 and then it'll take 4,001 through 4,003 as kind of these backup tunnel ports. So you can't put anything on that, on those ports, but the GUI doesn't tell you that you will get no error. Uh, you'll just notice a bunch of wonky traffic and you won't get any contracts. It'll be really weird until you go to the config file and realize you, you, have two things going to the same port so it doesn't know what to do with it so a little bit complicated in that regard but i mean i guess that's not really complicated that's just kind of a headache right figuring it out because you can't go to youtube and say hey how do i set up my store j it's not that popular yet there's not gonna be any tutorials you really got to read through the documentation and things like that so um so kind of nice um and ken asks so you need good upload and can you schedule bandwidth limits um good upload probably will help to be honest with you. I haven't seen too much as far as traffic. Uh, I think I've got, I've got a ton of files on there. Like when you think of shards as in pieces of files, I have a ton of them, but they only adds up to about eight to nine megabytes per disc that I set up. And you think I offered terabytes on these discs. Uh, so traffic wise hasn't been too much. You can do bandwidth limits, not within store J. Uh, actually that's a common question on their community. It's you, know, you use a third party app. There's a bunch of third party apps out there where you can limit an application's bandwidth and they suggest to go ahead and use those. I haven't had to do it yet because actually it's not using any bandwidth at all, really. I mean, 200 to 600 kilobits per second has kind of been the average there. And um, turning currency to cash is a good question, but you can do it on the anywhere that you can buy or sell Ethereum. So they, this is kind of the complicated part of it. So they changed the way the whole structure works and only certain wallets will work with these uh, alternative coins. So it's not really full Ethereum. It's an Ethereum based coin. So you have to have a special wallet that can, that can accept this store J um, X coin. And so once you get that wallet, you can, I believe I have not been paid out yet. They pay out once a month. Uh, but after that payout, I will let you know how it goes, but apparently you can sell then on, if you have that wallet, you could transfer it to Ethereum uh, and then sell that Ethereum is how I, it's how I believe it will work. But I, like I said, I haven't done that yet. Paid out once a month. It's early. It's super early. It's early, yeah. Um, but you think it's, it's like actually a very, we're in the prime time of this. So if you are thinking about it, we are essentially, do you remember back when Bitcoin and all this, you could mine coins and mm -hmm. you actually, it would actually be profitable to do it on your home computer back in the day, like a long time ago. Yeah. Well, we're at that stage right now with this where it's still pretty profitable, um, very early, not many people on it. I mean, we're talking a few thousand people. We're not talking even hundreds of thousands or anything yet. So if you want to get it on it, I would get in now. Um, are, so you they, mining, are you mining coins? Ethereum um, bits. I mean, are you doing the mining? You're too, getting or? the coins paid out for. Oh, I got your, you. So that's how they pay you. Essentially, it's it's like it's like instead of paying cash, they're paying you in these coins. Um, but the value. So I was just trying to look this up, and I didn't get it completed before. So apparently, they just switched over to a different coin. Uh, they were not Ethereum based before, and now they are. Uh, so. Yeah, it doesn't sound sketchy at all. No, 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 no. It, no. I'm just kidding. Just yeah, kidding. no. But it, it, it's one of those, it, it is interesting because it kind of does sound sketchy. That's the fun part about it. Uh, Bitcoin right? sounded really sketchy when it first started too. And Right. It's, hey, uh, let's see. Echo, how much is a Bitcoin right now? Hmm. I don't know that. Gosh, such a I can lender. tell you in two seconds. It's on my... Come on, Echo. Uh, $2,593. That's stupid. Yeah. So, Sorry, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, she's not sure. But you you bought in the thousands, right? Uh, what do you mean? Or? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You no, 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 no. Sorry, I did not buy. I bought right at about two thousand three hundred. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so made I've made a little bit of money so far, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. So they uh they actually switched. Sorry. The old coin that they switched from is SJCX, and this is just the new Store J token. Um, so, so that's how it works. So I was kind of a little bit confused because they just made the switch. They migrated their tokens, uh, just a little bit ago. And so you're kind of getting paid in a different way than you were before. Well, yeah. You got it. It's interesting. I mean, you got, you're out nothing like you're running the server, you know, you're not right. out a lot and you know, you're helping. It, it's interesting. Five terabytes. Like what's, so what's your total 
What's your total storage on that box? Oh, uh, well, this is, this is between two boxes. So the, uh, the R710 has three and a half terabytes. I'm offering up a terabyte from there, a terabyte from my NAS unit, um, a terabyte. What? Does it capture that terabyte and take it so you can't use it? No, it does not. So you can still use it until it starts to fill up. Right. Uh, but it does, no, it does not. It just says, hey, where can I store these files? So it'll grow, grow, grow until it hits that maximum. Yeah. Um, so I put a terabyte on the NAS. I put a terabyte. I have an internal drive on my Dell Optiplex, that 790 that I run, through a terabyte on there. I plugged in two external drives into that Optiplex. That's two more terabytes. So there's there's the five right there. So nice. I, you grab you end up grabbing all your extra drives and just attaching them to a device you already have running. You say, might as well, and let's see how this goes. And in a few months, we'll see if I make any money. And you're running the Windows software on the server? Yep, running Windows and software on the server and on the 790 on the Dell Optiplex. Okay. So yep. running it on both of those. Two instances. Yep, two instances of storage running. Right. Yeah. Make sure uh, if you go out to download it, if you actually go to the storej.io website and click download, it gives you a 32-bit version. So if you Google storej release, it'll get you out to the GitHub, which has the 64-bit um, version. So... Something to keep in mind. <laughs> I had to uninstall and reinstall. But uh, it's just something fun to play with. There's all of these. The, the fun part, too, is the community around it is amazing. So they've built all of these sites um, like storejstat.com. Uh, you go in there, you plug in all your nodes, and it tells you, okay, what's what's live, uh, where, what's it, what's the response time currently, what's your timeout rate, when's the, when was it last seen, so on the network, when's the last time it reported in for duty, uh, just to make sure all your nodes are are up and operating correctly, which is nice. So you got a bunch of all these just different. The community basically is built up around it to to support it. So okay, kind of interesting. I, I hope this will be one of those things. It's kind of like Bitcoin when it first started out. People were like, yeah, we'll see if this goes anywhere. So like we said, we'll see if this goes anywhere. Um, but a very interesting concept and one that's really fun to play with. And and I guess no harm, no foul, right? Well, at least for now, we'll see if yeah. there's any foul. But no, it's, it's, it's encrypted data. So it's right. not like you're, you know, it's and there. There's you, there's no way you can piece it back together. No. So, and you're not, are now, is there a, uh, they give you storage in the cloud for this too, right? So you get 25 gig of storage for free from them. Right. And you can, buy that's if you're a user, right? So the user, the 25 gigs okay. is on the farmer space. Right. So right. cloud is distributed. But um, you could open an account and use the farm for up to 25 gig, right? For free. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you want to be a user of this, you totally could be. Yeah. Um, now 25 gig of storage for free, that does not include the bandwidth. Gotcha. So you still got to pay for the bandwidth. Well, but no, I think the first 25 gig of bandwidth is free too. Oh, is it? 25 gig of storage, 25 gig of bandwidth. Okay. Um, cold storage for sure. Right. right. It's definitely cold storage. And when you look at the prices compared to an Amazon, now obviously it's it's got to prove itself as reliable and speedy and everything like that as Amazon, but about half the price as, uh, as some of the Amazon storage services, depending on which tier you compare it to. Um, but they're kind of, that. that's who they're gunning after, right? Is those competitors for cold storage. Yeah, I just it, you kind of wonder, you know, you're going after some businesses. And you're like, oh yeah, we've we've basically blown your data up, and we're placing it all over the web on this rented space. That's you yeah, know, and a lot of a lot of business users are like, eh, how about I just buy? This is my business, right? How about how about I just buy? I'll I'll pay a little bit extra for space. Well, and you know, you have the worry too. Okay, if all these users decided that we're revolting and we're turning off our machines. Those companies lost all their data. Well, like, yeah, so yeah, there's parity, but not, not at a data center anywhere, just among to another farmer. So if all the farmers up and leave, there goes the farm. <laughs> when Walla did this, that was the name of the company that did this, you know, for storage, same kind of deal, same exact kind of deal. They kept a copy in their data center. So they, you became the data center's backup. That was their oh, okay. they saved money by not having to have that data into, you know, they didn't have to have the data center and the backup. You were the right for it. Okay. And let's see was the company behind that. And they, they scuttled it uh, at some That's point. Awesome. 
see if I can. Um, and that's I haven't said voila. I love that service. I love this concept. This community based. Oh, me too. So can you guys see this? I'm just RDP'd into my and actually this is into the Dell Optiplex uh, machine. And I actually just rebooted these. I was getting caught playing with some of the settings. So basically, what you have is each of these is a node. And you'll see that, you know, this is the location. So on my iDrive, and I just create a storage A folder in each one of them. Uh, you got your uptime. So these were just restarted 25 minutes ago. Peers, uh, you think of like, um, you know, a BitTorrent. If you've ever done BitTorrent, this is how many other people are connected in your pool. So how many other people are probably sharing those shards with you? Uh, and then you've got how much data is actually used. So this is what I'm talking about where it's very small right now. Now these have only been running for like two days. So, but still only like seven megabytes on the biggest one. I'm um, in your port setting. So this GUI, this is all you get. This is, there's no, like even when I click edit here, if I were to stop this service and click edit, it opens a text edit on the config file. So there's no, that's as far as the GUI goes. So, I mean, yes, it looks nice uh, and neat, but um, to do anything, you actually need to get into the config files, which you do. There's actually quite a bit of stuff that you need to get in there for. Uh, so yeah, so that overall, and then I will show you as well. So that's kind of the GUI on the server side. And then if you were to go into, let's see, do you see this? Yep. yep you do. Yep. Okay. So if you were to go into here, this shows you, this is kind of your, this is that store stat, uh, storejstat.com where I plugged in all my nodes, gives you your last scene, a timeout, your timeout rate and your response time. So this is apparently updated every hour and apparently I had one of my settings wrong. So I'm hoping when this refreshes an hour, my response time is not in the 9,000s of milliseconds. I'm hoping it's down to much lower than that, two to four. Um, but yeah, but kind of interesting how you can go into these dashboards and it tells me I have all my nodes are online, but it's saying I have slow nodes and high timeout. And I'm hopefully that resets in about an hour because I changed the settings. But yeah, just a lot of fun. Is there, can you keep track of how much your coin or your payout is? Where where does it show that? You know, you know can't on here, but this is kind of the interesting part. So if I go to here, and there, I mean, this is public information. Anyone can sign up. So I'm not doing anything by showing this. Uh, okay, so this is so this is the chat. Doesn't that look exactly like Slack. I mean, you got your. Oh yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's Rocket Chat apparently. It's probably the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. thing. Um, gotta go up here. This is weird. It's should have been right here. <laughs> While you're looking it up, the gym says in chat. Oh, this is, uh, there's an old joke about how to never lose your data. Include it into dirty pictures or porn and upload it to the internet. <laughs> the porn rings will keep it available forever. <laughs> <laughs> so so this is uh this is actually the Google Doc that they keep. This is what they share with everyone. This is the accounting system uh, that they have. So if you look well, at this a ledger, right? I mean that's the ledger. The, this is what the, it is. The blockchain. So when you are when you are looking at your payout, these are all your addresses, so your Ethereum addresses, your gigabyte hours, telemetry report account, which I got to look into really what that is. It's kind of how they convert it over to a number that they can use to, to base your payoff of. Um, bytes, payout amount in store J coins, and then what that equates to in US dollars. So, that, I mean, that, that's how you would do it. So you can go look up and you would, you would basically do a find on your Ethereum address and just see how much you're getting. So is that, that $2 for that very top one? Yep. This person's getting two bucks. Hmm. And so, I'm assuming you're still in the sense at this point. Yeah. You actually don't get paid out until you get to a gigabyte hour. So until I get to, let's go. Well, it's interesting. Cause I don't know if so there are some people here who are getting paid 505 bucks a month. Now, I don't know how much, I mean, so can, there's their gigabit hours and, oh, there's, there's their downloaded bytes. Uh, but yeah, they're getting paid 505. Now, obviously it's pretty rare. I mean, this is, I think 5,000 lines long and I just sorted it. So you got some people up in the high numbers. You got a lot down here in the thirties, twenties, lower than that. Twelves starts to average out. I would say around eight or seven. Yeah. It'd be interesting to know how long they've been on the, you know. The, right. The exactly. 
Yeah. Um, but the, the kind of the cool part is too. So, uh, so the value of the store J coin is actually going up. So when they switched over, uh, so you, I think you're getting paid in store J, you could actually hold out and see if that goes up. If this company does well and mega upload actually does have a deal with them and things like that and takes off, you know, your, your three bucks now could be worth a different amount later. So right. adds a whole nother, you know, just fun aspect. To I've the got game. A, and, and you don't have to have a screaming fast box to do this, right? At all. It's just, None. It's just no. storage. So right. I got an old gen seven, I think, you know, server that I'm, that I use for windows server. Right. You put that on there and it's got a few drives on it. You could kind of grow that. That could kind of be your store J server. Oh yeah. And as it, as one drive fills up, right. Then you, and if it's working, then you're like, well, okay, let's add another node. Right. Is there any advantage to having multiple nodes to start with? Or will it like, will that get you more storage if you offer more nodes? You know, I, that's, that's a good question. Um, some of my nodes, like one node is up at seven megabytes while one's down at 200 kilobits. So, I mean, so yeah. kilobytes, um, you need, a one, you need a one gig load to get a payout is get, apparently what something. it is. Okay. So it, I, I, it's a rabbit hole though. I warn you, if you get into this and you start going through all the documentation, you will spend hours cause it's fun. Uh, it's also, I mean, just kind of complicated. So it's, it's hard to wrap your brain around even me. I've looked through this stuff for the last two days and trying to get through all the different reports of how it happens. Uh, Ted asked how often the pay cycle is. It's monthly. So they just released the June payout report and they'll pay out here in a few days. So at the end of each month, they'll issue the report for the last month and you can go and check and see if you had enough to be on the list and then, and then go from there. Initially they were during beta. There was a lot of store J's files that they were testing. So they're basically doing stress tests. So they didn't have any customers. They were throwing out these massive amounts of files to all their farmers, still paying their farmers, which is kind of nice for basically stress testing the system, seeing how well it works. Um, if someone throws a bunch of video files up there, can it handle it? That sort of stuff. Hmm. I'll have yeah. to give it a shot. I'll have to give it a shot. No I harm, no always, foul, right? You might as well try. I can always ping you for help for the yeah. getting set up. It yeah, I figured sound, out that. I don't. Did you? Do you have to do port forwarding to make this thing work? No. And I think actually that's. I think that's one of my problems. Actually, um, you, it, use it. Do you have UPnP set up on your network? I'd have to look on them. It's so, so the on, the you either on need to port, port forward or have UPnP set up. But if you have either one of those, then you should be good to go. Yeah, I'll have to give it a, would, would be interesting. Again, it fits into that wall uh, criteria. And, you know, I loved that. I love that concept. So, right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, cool. Yeah. Store J. Storej.io is the website. When store does not have an E. How S -T -O -R -J. long? Yeah. How long have they been doing this? Uh, I think since so 2000, early 2016, uh, I think was when they released their first beta. So beta wave A. So these guys won a hackathon. They won a hackathon and they said, okay, we're going to, we, there, there's a viable business behind this. And they went out and started it. And they were off to the races. So what it's just, it's one of those fun things that, you know, in, in three years, this could be the, the Bitcoin that you and I are so frustrated with that if we would have listened three years ago, you know, uh, we could have, we could have had a little fortune built up, but uh, you know, yeah. We'll see. yeah. I mean that I'm not, I'm not trying to miss out on any of those anymore. from our first show when we were talking with, what with was it the, like 10 bucks? No, it was three. No, no, it was 300. Oh, was it? It's just two, it was 268 or something like that. Hold on. I think I have I'm still here. Hold on. Um, but yeah, I mean, even at 300, let's see here. Edward. Uh, 269, 308. So we had him on at 223. I think that's the first time he was on July 25th of 2015. And. I had interviewed him before at um, at uh, one of the conferences. Ken, to answer your question, yes, I run outdoor POE cameras, and yeah. it runs through my attic, so I had it really easy. I punched through with a drill, um, 
and then I sealed it up with a little bit of that spray foam that kind of goes and expands, and uh, it, it worked pretty well. D- during that show, if because I had set up an, a, a Coinbase account. That's what I use, Coinbase. They're one of the I, rare U.S. Um, can you use Coinbase to... Re- a Coinbase wallet to accept these? No, so that's the interesting thing. And you get confused. You're like, oh, an Ethereum. So I there's a My Ether wallet is the best way to go. Very, very easy to set up, super secure. Um, you get a download file that has all of your, your key in it. And you also set up a password. So anytime you want to get into your wallet on My Ether wallet, you go to My Ether wallet, upload your file, type in the password, and it unlocks your wallet for you so you can see everything that's one they suggest if you're going to do this and it takes two seconds to set up see coinbase is different so coinbase is an exchange where you can buy um, and sell so all the information that you needed to set up a coinbase account i mean that took forever to set that up if when i set mine up uh the my ether wallet is legitimately two seconds (laughs) just you type in a password and it gives you the file so when we set this Bitcoin up for every hundred dollars I deposited, they gave you $25. That was this, that's, that was. Oh, it, really? Yeah. Yeah. It says Coindesk. There's, I have a link here. I, Coindesk uh, or Coinbase? Uh, no, hold on. It says, um, during the show, I created a Coinbase account. I get $25 Bitcoin credit for every hundred dollars deposited. If I do it through this link, I wonder if this wow. link still works. Um, oh, it, it's a referral type deal. So if I referred folks on, they deposit a hundred dollars, I would have made twenty five for every hundred dollars. I would have made twenty five, right, for referral. Okay, but um, it still works, actually. Not not worth as much, or at least the link is still there. Not worth as much today, or it's harder to you know to buy. But I think you know uh, at uh, let's just let's just do the math. So you jump in. You know, you buy three Bitcoin for a thousand bucks. You hold them till today. Uh, that's now seven thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. Seven times. Yep. It's <laughs> that's stupid. It is. <laughs> it's just stupid. It is just stupid dumb. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, I don't know. So if if I go to Store J, I see the place to download the Windows. Don't download do Store that. J share for Windows. What you're saying is Google. It's a yeah, it's a GitHub. Just say Store J releases. I believe. Store J release. Store J releases. So it's releases. Uh, on GitHub slash Store J slash Store J share. Just make sure on Store J share. That's what you want. Uh, in the in the GUI point two, yep. GUI. Here's the. So is it six point two? I'll throw it in the chat room. Six point two point zero. Yep, and then so there's that Win sixty four one sixty four download down there. Yeah. Okay, I'll throw that on the Drobo. I think I'm going to give it a try. So in theory, go in, set this up. Yep. Do I need, does it walk me through to tell me how to set up the accounts and stuff for payment? And- There's no accounts. All it is is your uh, Ethereum address. So go to myetherwallet.com or .org. .org. Myetherwallet.com. The front page is literally enter a password, any password you want, click create new wallet, and you're done. <laughs> myetherwallet.com? Yep. And it, no, it's not right. My Can you Ether- put that in the chat room? Yes. I, yours was right. I just didn't spell it right. There we go. So you would create a new password. It'll give you a download file. That is very important. Uh, put that on your home server, all your computers. Make sure, just make sure you have that. That's how you get into your wallet. Um, and then it'll give you an address. If I already created a wallet somewhere. Well, this is, it may, there's different. something like, is it an X? X20 compatible or something like that. Basically, it's got to be able to accept these coins that aren't Ethereum but are Ethereum based. It's kind of how it works. Okay. I'll let LastPass create it for me. One sec here. 
That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, so then security. even if someone got a hold of your file, uh, they would still need your password. That's how that works. So if someone hack, if you put this in, if you put the file that they're about to give you in a Dropbox and someone hacks it and gets it, uh, they would still need your password. So it's a little bit of two-factor authentication there. For all the uh, three dollars you're going to make off of um, storage in the next year. <laughs> yeah, you got to do some stuff, don't you? You'd have to. You'd have to have some pretty good storage. I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll see, right? I think it's. It's going to be a lot about the traffic that they that they get if they do get some of these big partnerships and the few thousands of us that are signed up do get all this traffic all of a sudden, it'll be great for us. Um, if the platform blows up before it gets any customers, it'll be terrible for us. So we'll, we'll just see how it but goes. But you're not out anything. No, you're not out anything at all. You delete the app, you delete the files, you're done. Save your private key. So it it I downloaded a... Yep. So that's the file you need to keep safe. So put it, but put it everywhere so it's accessible. But uh, make sure you have it. And it's a, um, it's a UTC number. Yep, exactly. Okay, there we'll throw this out here. I've got, I have a file that says, "Do not delete." I'll put that in there. That gets backed up. So, okay. So I got that. Save your private key. That's the same thing, I'm assuming. So Maybe. if you up top, there's like new wallet. Once you have that, you can go to like send ether and tokens. I just click on that. It'll say upload your file. So upload the same file you just downloaded. Type in your password and then click unlock. And then you'll have your account address, which will show. Unlock your wallet to see your address. Is that what you said? Yep. Um, oh, there we go. Keystone, select your wallet file. I'll just go to the downloads because that's where I put it. For now, downloads, it's going to be at the very bottom. Grab that. If I open, select wallet value, put the password in. Oh, that's not right. Uh, let's see. Did it save it? Oh, shiza. I might have to start over. <laughs> now, what happens, like, so if I lose this, if I did it wrong and I lose this, it just means I have to start over and get a new one, right? Yep. And that, yeah. then that comes out of the, that's an address that's permanently lost in the Bitcoin. Yeah, that's an address that it's out there, it's valid, but no one can access it. I copy and pasted it because I was going to save it, and I didn't save it. <laughs> uh, let's see if it's... It should just download that UTC file, right? Yeah. You, no, it did it, but I, I don't think I saved it. You know, I used that really... I used a 16-character password from LastPass. I didn't think... I, I don't think I saved that password anymore. Oh, saved the password. Gotcha. Yeah. I think you meant the file. So I gotta start over. All right. Nothing like doing this live. I'm actually going to... I'm actually going to stop because it's really hard to do this thing live. Uh, guys, if you're out there, can you hang tight for one second, Mike? Oh, yeah. If you're out there, still out there, thanks for staying up with us and appreciate it. I'm going to delete this uh, file off here because I'll never get back to it. To get confused. Actually, uh, maybe um, I don't want to do this live, but I may walk through a quick setup. You got time to walk me through oh, a quick yeah, setup? Totally. Okay. All right. So, we'll, uh, I don't want to broadcast that because there's lots of numbers <laughs> that. You know, and it's not all that exciting to no. uh, to hear it done. So maybe report, we can report back next week. Report back next. Oh, week. so Ken's following along. Um, oh. What do you have to unlock the wallet? And when you unlock the wallet on the right side, there will be your address. Um, here, I can show you. Because I don't care if people see my address. Send me all the bitcoins you want or Ethereum coins you want. They can't use that. Oh, they have to have your password. Yep. So. Set up a new wallet. So once you unlock it, uh, Ken, hopefully you can see this. Your account address is right here. And then when you go into the StoreJ GUI and you're setting up a new node, 
this is like the first question I believe that asks you is what account address do you want to use? Just simply copy and paste this address over there. And you guys can see that, so these token balances, this is what you're getting is, a, is an Ethereum token. And one of the available ones down here, there's actually a ton of these, is StoreJ. So you'll start to, the, your address will start to accumulate StoreJ tokens, uh, which you could later transfer and purchase. Which again, I know Ken, I think it was you that had asked how that all works. And I don't know yet. I will let you know uh, as soon as I get some. But we'll see. <laughs> So Ken, hopefully that helps. That's the last step. Uh, yeah. Oh, so when you're going in and editing the, I'll just, one quick thing is, if you're doing this on a Windows machine, it stores, so in your program files, that is where the store J stuff is stored. But the configuration for the node, they were smart, they stored it somewhere else. So if you go to your users folder, click on you, whatever it is, like for me, M Uyghur, um, there's a dot config folder that it creates. And in there you will find a conf uh, configuration files. It'll be the name of the node. Uh, and those are the files there, JSON files. So as soon as you, you can edit those in text edit, um, and those are the, that's where the config files are stored. So I was looking in the program files. They're not there. They're in the dot config folder under your user. Uh, once you get a node set up, they will show up there. Uh, yeah, from that, from your my Ether wallet, keep your file, keep that safe. Because if you don't have that, you cannot get back into this wallet. So if you start accumulating millions of dollars and you lost that file, you're out. So, um, so yeah, so just keep that file. And the address, copy and paste it somewhere so you have it easily accessible for when you're putting it in your node. And that's all you need from, from the wallet side of things. And for anyone else who's listening to this after the fact, I don't know if you are or not, but you don't need to use my Ether wallet. That's the one that StoreJ suggests. A lot of people use it. Very popular. I kind of trust them. Um, so that's what I use. But you can really use any Ethereum wallet that supports the tokens, which you got to make sure they do. Because like Jim mentioned, Coinbase does offer Ethereum. I can buy and sell Ethereum through Coinbase, uh, but this is, it does not support the tokens. So just make sure you get a wallet that does. But all right, we can hop off so I can, I can walk through Jim. But yeah. Ken, Ken, if you have any other questions, just uh, hit me up on Facebook or Twitter or something. I can, can help you out. And that goes for anyone, actually. If you have any questions, just let me know. Cool. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for coming out.